Okay, here we are again for the final time with this game. No more book burning for the Commonwealth. Unless that book burning is a book roasting, because everybody read it and found out that the book isn't so good. So we will uh, get started on our last rites in about three and a half minutes. If I am not taken away from the stream in my moment of doing things. Where was I? <laughs> oh boy. It, it always happens, constantly, without fail. <laughs> I'll go the whole day and nobody will call me and then I'll turn on the stream and be like, okay, now I can relax. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, we need you to do something. Thankfully, this was something I could fix almost immediately, so. Hey, Marie, how's it going? Welcome back. You almost missed the finale. You're washing dishes because you probably need to start Thanksgiving dinner today. Actually, I need to start tomorrow, not today. Thanksgiving's Thursday, not tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, if you were starting today, I would hope you'd be feeding a lot of people. Because <laughs> that's, uh, that's a lot of preparation you'd be doing. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it, it never hurts to be prepared, but I feel like that might be a little over-prepared. <laughs> You caught yourself, that's true. So at the very least you didn't, you know, get started on it and you're like in the middle of it and then it's like, wait a minute, today's Tuesday. Yeah, I've, I've had that happen before with other things where it's like, wait a minute, no, this is the wrong day of the week. <laughs> but at least you caught yourself. All right, um, let's get this moving here and grooving here. Click this, I'll take a drink, and by the time I'm done taking a drink and we click load campaign, we should be able to uh, be right at 431. As a matter of fact, my other clock just turned to 431, so perfect timing. All right. Here we go. Now, I mentioned it in uh, on the Discord server, but there is a bit of a pattern to the titles that I've been using for this game. And if you have not guessed what it is yet, fret not, because in the process of watching this, you're either watching this live, and you'll hear me say this, or you'll be watching this in post, and you'll already know the answer to what the pattern was, because the title of this episode will tell you the name of the song that it was all coming from. 
but uh, that's neither here nor there. What's here now is a liberation rite, and one of the last ones, so we'll go do it in a moment. How you doing, everybody? Welcome to the finale of Pyre the Stream Edition. Last time, we uh, tried to make the most of the time we had left with uh, the fact that the rites were coming slowly, and actually not slowly, ever more quickly to a close um, by liberating as many people as we could. We made it to the sixth liberation rite right at the front door of it, and we actually cucked over the chastity and the accusers to prevent them from ever getting a chance at liberation because it's fun cucking over Manly, excuse me, and Lendl. And uh, the Pyre Hearts are here, so <laughs> we'll see what happens when they bring their all to bear. I've actually never seen them in a Liberation right before, so this will be a first for me. I don't know if it'll be difficult because they'll have like ridiculous stats and other stuff, but we'll see. Uh, first things first, though, let's check the Slug Market. I don't think he'll have anything that I'm particularly enthusiastic about, but you never know, he might. Uh-huh, I'm sure. It's probably cold because you're not fully protected from the sweeping rain. It's raining sideways here. I think this was Great Britain. I will see what I can buy from you to maybe perk up your spirits here. Well, that looks like, yeah, I was going to say, a fortified moon serum. Let's buy that from him because that will come in handy for us. Give that to Volfred. You're welcome. Do you need a blanket, Ron? <laughs> because I can probably provide one. We've got a few spares now that we've liberated so many people. <laughs> so. Uh, I think that's about it, actually. Well, I'm glad, Ron. I'm glad that we've been able to make you a rich man down here. All right, uh, nothing to read in the book. Ponder the orb. Did I read my planner last time? I did not. Uh, Aldium, the 27th of Twelfth Moon. It, it's past Christmas. Okay, then. Uh, back already to the Fall of Solium. We shall have to confront the Pyre Hearts this time. They must be desperate to prevail. As are we. Yeah, fair enough, considering, you know, all that we've got going on, so. I mean, beef and turkey, lasagna, yellow cake with chocolate icing, some canned cranberry jelly since you couldn't find any. What else? Cinnamon rolls, maybe spaghetti. Gonna step on Sir Deluge, aren't you? Had all week. Who else showed up? I guess Sir Deluge might have. They may have gotten here before us, but I don't know. Sounds like you're getting all the fixins though for Thanksgiving. So that sounds good. Uh, let's see. So that's already maxed out. So we don't need any more Stardust. We want to give Volfrid the plus one presence again. It's not really huge for him, but I'm already giving all the quickness stuff to Bertrude, so I might as well give him and Tizo something so that they feel like they've had a chance, you know to be boosted up a little bit. All right, and I think that's about it. We could also sell Hawub's Wing, but I'll do that later. Uh, for now, we have a Liberation right to go to, so let's go to it. To find fixins, just trying to make food. Also mac and cheese, not spaghetti. Yeah, it's still pretty good though, all things considered. I mean, fixins for me is like, you don't necessarily have to have like a turkey breast or a turkey roast at Thanksgiving. It's just like, as long as you have like a, a meat, a pasta, a vegetable, and a dessert, that's fixins to me, so. That's what I figure. I mean, we've always had lots of fixins, but that's because, like, when we would have family gatherings for Thanksgiving, but that's because everybody would bring one thing, and there's like, oftentimes at least ten people coming to the thing, so. <laughs> that That's a lot of fixins. So. All right, so it's either us or Sir Deluge, and I think I know who I would rather. <laughs> so, what's up there, Tariq? Well, judging by Volfred's arithmetic and all of my uh, thought processes, yeah, there are two that are left, including this one now. It's the conclusion that I've made based on my observations and his. Yep. That's what I figured. Yeah, I will make sure that we make the most of our time together. We'll uh, make sure that we uh, have our last conversation with Sir Gilman before he goes, because in a minute he's going to be facing his old triumvirate with his freedom at stake. And uh, as usual, we'll leave those off. Uh, I'm going to turn all of them on, though, for the finale. Uh, well, not just the finale, the part of the finale. So the next two rites, I'm going to turn on all the Titan stars, basically. Uh, you probably could guess the reasons for that, but I'll, we'll get to it in a moment if you haven't. So, 
Probably not gonna have a burp. Maybe you can do something with these carrots. I don't know. This is hard. Oh, Never to Return just got intense, didn't it? Yeah, it's the the early part of Never to Return. So I actually like this version though as well, even though I've never heard it in game. The percussion on the Pyre Hearts version of this is pretty good. So. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, you've got turkey lasagna, so as far as I'm concerned, like a meat lasagna is pretty much a protein, basically. Rita, I would ask that you think back for just a moment, if you please. Sure, Brighton. When I'll you first indulge you. Looked upon the Book of Rights, think back upon the words that it revealed. Uh huh. Oblige the voice that tells you more. Right, I did. Oblige the voice that tells you more. I think you're conflating the word the oblige with the follow their every still. word. I would not sing your praises to them, rest assured. I don't think they'd listen to you, to be I fair. Trust that you shall savor this occasion. You shan't have to oblige me for much longer. Well, that's just fucking great. <laughs> Oh boy. Alright, let's see what Sir Deluge has to say for himself. <laughs> Survived by sheer force of cowardice. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> I'm glad she's aware. I. Why would we spread lies about you? What purpose would that possibly serve? <laughs> Celeste is just giving it to him between the, well, okay, in the eye, because he doesn't have two of them, so. Oh, boy. Sure. A traditional duel to the death, huh? Well, uh, we can't do that because no one dies in the rites, but he somehow puts his mask back on. I love how it, they just make it, like... Uh, questionable as to how he could possibly do that considering he only has one appendage and he's like his helmet just like pops open every time he puts his mask on and takes it off so well unfortunately for you sir deluge one of us is getting out of here and uh i already know who it's gonna be so why wouldn't a lasagna have meat in it unless you're vegan or something yeah that's true I've, uh, I've had vegan lasagna before, though. Um, they had it one time at the Thanksgiving when I was at school, when I was staying at, like, in the dorms, and I had a little bit of it because, honestly, I was like, you know what, this is free because I could just buy this stuff with my food card, basically. Like, okay, so it's not free, but I have a certain amount of money on my food card, so I was like, I'm just going to take a little of this and a little of this and a little of this. I took everything, <laughs> just a little bit of everything. So, and it, I mean, it wasn't bad. It just didn't taste the same as a meat lasagna, but it wasn't bad. I'm glad the two of them are working together again. Whom shall you attempt to send home this time? That is the question, but I think we already know. The only one that would make sense in this particular instance, which is Bertrude, no. <laughs> it's Sir Gilman. Sir Gilman. We shall find out, Sir Gilman, because if you're going to regain your honor, the best place to do it is against your old adversaries that were holding you back. Who shall lend him support? Tilda, you're going to be cooking half of tomorrow, and then probably until dinner Thursday. Food. <laughs> Lots of food. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sure it'll all be good. So, good luck with the cooking, but I'm sure it'll all be good. All right, Volfred, you're coming with too. Volfred. Get that ash and coal. We shall with all due speed. And Bertrude, Bertrude, because she has all due speed, so. I love how her aura is large enough where she just envelops Sir Gilman's and then it pushes into Volfred's and allows his aura to be bigger. It's kind of funny. Very well. Uh, I think you're in the wrong place and fighting the wrong people if you want me to go easy. I have two speeds, Sir Deluge. Stop and go. Take this, thank you. Sir Gilman, I'm gonna try to have you score as much as possible. Uh, it's probably gonna mostly be a Bertrude show, though. As usual. But, you know. The worst part will be decorating the cake. Yeah, fair enough. It's, it's just one of those things. <laughs> it takes a little bit of doing. Deft hand. I'm sure you are. Oh boy. 
Uh, I think I had Conventure a guess, but let's see what he says. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's got five people that went before him that can give an example of why he knows. Sure you will. Alright. Off we go. Oh look, it ate my R1 input. That's okay. It's raining now? I don't know what this does either. I've never had the Pyre Hearts be here, so what does this do? It might be soaking mine too. Henceforth, your pyres shall be gradually drained by the rainfall. Okay, well, it's a good thing I'm so fucking fast. <laughs> because I get the feeling... Okay, so maybe it'll do minus 10 each turn. Uh, Bertrude, you might be scoring for the rest of the right. <laughs> you might be our scoring opportunity just to get this over with faster. Oh, good, you've even got the ball. Okay, the ball. Uh, yes, sir, going. Why don't you grab that? Oh, God, I moved all the way out here. Hey -ya! I'll take this. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, I had Wolfred here. Hang on. Goodbye. Nice, I'll take this. Thank you. Oh, God. Hey, look, I got Vital Pounce there. Good. We just did 35 because of the rain and hex the Hex of Defeat. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, he's chasing me. He's chasing me, that's for sure. Okay. Okay, so you the rain actually just has you deal 5 additional damage. That's, I mean, that's fine, but... I mean, I kind of would have liked something more, I guess. Where would you like to go? I will take that if you if you're gonna give it to me, I'll take it. Sure. Okay, I ran into that one. It's okay though. Now he has vengeful, vengeful vow. Okay. Boy, if it was uh, constantly uh, draining my pyre, this round would have like done a bit to it, wouldn't it? Oh well. It was a curb stomp. Blasted Noxalus. You will not get a higher station in the co in the Commonwealth here, Sir Deluge, because pretty soon the Commonwealth will be no more. And thus the scribes have chosen the exile appointed by the Night Wings <laughs> shall be free. <laughs> you gritting your teeth yet, Brighton? Of all misdeeds. Return to glory in the Commonwealth. His adversary and all others shall remain to carry out their rightful sentences. Now excuse me while I go throw up. <laughs> He's just a wee bit salty, just a bit, yeah. Got offensive skills and leveling, Sir Gilman, but you didn't do anything besides rush the orb and the enemy pyre. So oftentimes that's all it takes with Sir Gilman. He could, because he's the fastest character that you get for your triumvirate, oftentimes he can just run circles around people. He's even faster than Rookie because he doesn't have to accelerate. He gets to his top speed immediately. So that being said, I did use Avenging Aid a couple of times with his Greater Cleave Slash. So like if you've ever seen me use his aura like I did once in this right. Um, yeah, it, it comes in handy sometimes. I just find personally that it's difficult to use his attacks when he's so fast. It's kind of like using Bertrude to attack when she's so fast with Serpent Swiftness that you might as well just have her plunge instead. Um, but it depends, it depends too on who you're using as your scorer. You could use, you know, Sir Gilman as more of an attacker. You could have him go past the orb and then slash people to get them out of the way. It especially comes in less handy because of Shaq's six shoulders, though, because, like, if he cut across the whole enemy team, it would kill all of them, it would banish all of them, rather, but they'd all automatically come back, too, so. Oftentimes, because of the Titan Star setup I have, I don't usually do a lot of attacking. I usually just try to run past if I can. It's usually easier. All right, Sir Gilman. I don't know if he can hear me. He seems like he's in shock. <laughs> it's 
game has you interested AF, there's a few ways to make something out of the gameplay. Well, I'm glad to hear that, because I would prefer that my playthrough not just be something that people watch, but also something that people become interested in actually playing the game from, so it's good to hear that that's worked out. I think it's worked out for a couple of other people, too, because I think Sefiko has decided he's going to play this since it was already in his library, and Lifeblood said that he's going to get it, too, so... That is good, as far as I'm concerned. I've done well for myself. You are to be free, Sir Gilman. Yep. That is... Yes, that is the contract, basically, down here. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, we love you, too, Sir Gilman. You've, you've been the comic relief to our... Uh, relatively somewhat more serious triumvirate, especially since Ruki left, but you know. That is the thing about this, isn't it? It's not, it's uh, not, the journey's not over for you because you have more honor to earn in the Commonwealth in the process of helping us transform the place into a more democratic establishment. That's the idea, Sir Gilman. Mere distance will not separate our spirits. He's always the one to get the last word, isn't he? Sir Gilman earned back his freedom. He is set to return to the Commonwealth and leave the downside forever. May he return in honor and glory. Godspeed, Sir Gilman. The cycle of the rites is nearly at an end. Well, Brighton really was salty. That's all he had to say? Holy shit. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. That takes care of that. There are three left that have a chance at liberation. I have to choose among them which one I'm going to let be free, potentially. In the very off chance that we manage to win the final liberation, right? Oh, boy. <laughs> Yes, pick your child, I know. <laughs> it's a very tempting thing. When you love something, set it free. That's the saying. You figured out your next suggestion whenever those open up? Don't think I'll finish, but that's okay. No, that's fine. I mean, as long as I get the chance to play it, I, I feel like that's okay. You know what I mean? If I, if I finish it then, so much the better. But if not, at least I'll have a chance to play it, you know? All right. So... That takes care of the Pyre Hearts. Good job, everybody. They only had one good round, to be fair, and even then they didn't manage to score, but, you know. So Sir Gilman has regained his freedom. And now it's just us. Four plus Tariq. As for his uh, impact on the plan, well, the plan's current probability of success is 92%, so, uh, yeah, big number go up further. <laughs> Again, you don't fail the plan as long as you've liberated six exiles. So at the moment, since we won six liberation rights, we have locked in the most peaceful ending to the revolution. Uh, so really, from here on, if we lose, it's not really a big deal. It's just a matter of who goes free in the last liberation right. There is one more right to do before that, though, so we'll get there in a sec. You don't think it'll jive with me enough to make me want to finish? Well, but still, it, it broadens my horizons a little bit with games, you know, and I'm always okay with that. I'm always okay with playing games that I'm not necessarily... I haven't heard of before or aren't necessarily usually my cup of tea. I'm willing to try, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Let's see where we're going. We've got one page to read in the book, and then after that we'll go. The last few stars, too stubborn to relinquish their light. Let's see where they lead us. Excuse me. There's one at Haub. There's one at Gol. And there's one at Jamior. Alright, let's see who's uh, still stubborn enough to actually go play a game against me. <laughs> oh look, the Chastity are up here and so are the Accusers. Not that they'll get the chance. Uh, it is still Aldium, the 27th to 12th moon. I cannot stop thinking about what should happen if we fail. Less so to those of us who remain trapped here, but rather to those who returned to the Commonwealth. Because we gotta think about where they're gonna go after this. Oh, by the way, you'll notice the Pyre Hearts are now crossed off of the list. 
It's because they no longer have any real chance at freedom before the rights are ended. Technically speaking, nobody except for the Chastity and the Accusers do. But, well, we already know who we're going to be facing in the final right, so not, neither do they, really, <laughs> to be fair. Alright, so who's available? Let's see. Uh, the Tempers are here, the Fate are here, and the Essence are here. We haven't seen the Essence since the last Liberation right that we fought them in, and that was the second cycle, so honestly... No, no disrespect to the fate or to the tempers, but I think that's where we're going next. So back to Gaul we go. Yeah, that's the plan, but... I think I know what he's saying. No, I will do that. Uh, basically what I think he was about to say was, I'm not sure if they have any real chance here, considering how far down the standings they are, but, you know. Oh, Bertrude, what's up? You, you, uh, feeling a little nostalgic about your fellow brethren of snakes? I think she's doing a prayer. Hmm. The Bog Benediction, huh? Guess I must have read about this at one point. An old blessing of goodwill from the southern bogs, never uttered there in modern times. Then again, Bertrude's not exactly modern, so... <laughs> the bog dwellers bade their more adventurous brethren to go forth and seek the other peoples of the land, which is probably how the Commonwealth came across them to begin with. So. Oh. Uh, sorry, I was just gonna check on the book, honestly. Oh, okay, well that's cool. I'm glad that someone's praying for him. Oh, okay, gotcha. So yeah, they're they're kind of cut from a similar cloth, uh, crones and worms. Worms are more suited to marine travel than crones. Crones are more suited to land-based travel, so. Fair enough, that makes sense. <laughs> that You know, that also makes sense too, that's fair. We will see. It seems like he had high hopes for him in the plan anyway, so. Do, do you want me to leave? I'll leave if you need me to. No, I, I get it. His shouting was very loud. <laughs> Alright then. Fair enough. I think he will. He seemed an honorable sort, so... Alright then. Um, Sandra, any passing thoughts? Before we move along here? Nope. Okay. Her last line of dialogue probably happens uh, right before the final boss fight, so. You too, Sandra. I'll be back. Not to worry. Alright, it looks like uh, Bertrude, he, she uh, moved her benediction outside, so we'll just read the book while she's doing it. On Legacy. Reader, though you shall always bear a burden, it is much lighter than the burden of a lonesome exile. You could say that again. Go forth and become free, then join with others such as you and lead with mercy, continuing to demonstrate your worth and knowing that the Empire's fall formed the foundation of our commonwealth. You shall cease to be a reader and become a voice, a voice both to the free and to your successors here, who shall take up this book when you no longer need it. The cycle of the rights shall see to it that you and others like you shall be liberated ere the coming of another age. May the stars shine brightly on us all. I, I still struggle to f fathom how they didn't see this being taken advantage of, but then again, I'm in that cynical, near post-capitalism mindset, so that's probably why. <laughs> oh, but you know, they, they took advantage of it, Triesta, they definitely did, sorry to say it. You guys already know, though, you scribes, because of uh, the fact that your invocations are ending, so. Hey, John, how's it going? Welcome back. Yeah, finale day. We just finished the sixth liberation right. We have one more regular right, and then the final boss fight, so we're almost there. Uh, oh, hey, look, my solar shell has uh, poured its heart out for me. <laughs> I will not remove the heart, though, because that is that is his. He can keep that. But thank you for showing it to me, showing me your heart. That's very nice of you. <laughs> All right, uh, so we got back the Luminous Idol. I can sell that now. 
Uh, I don't want to use these serums just yet, though, because the next right is just a regular one against the Essence. We'll wait to use these until we get to the actual final boss fight, so we'll keep these over here. We'll sell them off once we see Ron again, and uh, yeah, so we'll have this as our final equipment setup. We'll have the Bright Wisp for Tizo, so he can go for a run and use his star signs. Uh, Volfrid will hold on to the Ashen Coal, so that I'm not at such a disadvantage. And Bertrude can have the Prayer Beads, because they're busted. Okay, I think that's it for this. Let's head on out. Yep, gotta figure out who we're sending and whether or not the Essence are going to give us a challenge when we get to the Ridge of Gold. Only one way to find out now, though. So off we go. Anything else to be seen? Probably not. It's even getting red down here now. <laughs> oh my god, we're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the dissidents are still hanging around, it looks like. And, no, the pyre hearts are flying around. I'm trying to figure out why they're all flying around yet. Maybe they haven't yet figured out that they just cannot possibly win enough favor to get here. Hmm. Well, if they haven't figured it out yet, they will soon enough. Sorry, guys, but that's just the way that it crumbles. You will not be favored by the stars this night. So the finale to uh, the finale to XCOM happened on Christmas Day, and the finale to this one's probably going to happen on New Year's Eve. That's just great. Why is the music in this game so good? Darren Korb is an excellent composer. That is why, and Ashley Barrett is also an excellent composer. And together, uh, they're pretty unstoppable. <laughs> I mean, I'm still impressed. It's taller than we are, even where from the heights we're at, so. But yeah, this is Lord Gandroth. We've seen him in the book. The Serpent Titan, vanquished by the scribe Gaul Galathanian. He brandished his tower shield and sent Gandroth's fury right back into his countenance. Or countenance? However you say it. Probably countenance. In the Book of Rights. I don't think we've actually used uh, Lord Gandroth, though, as one of the Titan Stars, so we'll probably unlock quite a few entries in the book once we uh, turn him on in about two seconds. So, uh, An interest snake in this route to the Ridge of Gaul, or we could go back to Blooming Pool and it'll give us a chance to pursue vocations. Not that those matter particularly much anymore. I guess we could go foraging in Blooming Pool. I actually don't know what's there to be foraged, so uh, sure, why not? Okay, so, nobody wants to talk to me, let's explore Blooming Pool. Take a quick survey. What do you guys think? I mean, Jodario seemed to think there was stuff of note around here, but, uh, well, maybe not anymore. Okay. So it sounds like we've got some free time, so take five, everybody. I'll pursue some vocations while we're at it, and we'll see what we can do. This is literally another game you have played. <laughs> there you go. I don't know what you mean by it, but if you want to elaborate, feel free, unless you're talking about foraging. Oh, okay, that's what you're talking about, where it's like there's not a lot of events. Okay. On New Game Plus, there's nothing left to do during your endgame free time, so you just do random BS. Yeah, and I mean, that happens in a lot of games that have, you know, a lot of flags and a lot of potential story bits that you may have already seen, so it happens. I understand, you know. All right, let's go foraging, because why the hell not? I, this may be uh, the first of many forages down here, considering I'm going to be stuck here for fucking eternity. Uh, but, yeah, I guess we might as well see what we can find. Uh, something Falcon Ron values at the Titan Nails, or in the boil pools, a source of enlightenment. Huh. Steaming springs whose source of heat is thought to come from the other side. Interesting. The remains of things long gone, which once walked and shaped the prairie. Uh, where do we want to forage? I don't particularly care either way. We could go to the Titan Nails or the Boil Pools. They'll probably both get us something of value, but which one does everybody feel like? Seeing. Flags? Nah, this game has Persona-style social links to develop. Okay, there you go. Maxing a person lets you get their ending, but you only get one ending a playthrough. Okay, I see. Yeah, that would, that would make sense then, because then you go to New Game Plus and it's like, okay, well, I've already done a whole bunch of this stuff, so... Titan nails so Volfred doesn't fucking die. I mean, you're probably right about that. Boil pools would uh, not be so good for Volfred. <laughs> so.
so. John, we okay with Titan Nails? Is that where we want to go forage? I think uh, if you go to the boil pools, it gives you an item, excuse me, that we haven't seen on this playthrough, but I think you see it more in true Nightwing difficulty because it's available in the shop. And what it does is it, I think it just gives you a flat 1000 enlightenment. So it's almost like a tutoring thing, basically, like a, a tutoring session. So Titan Nails sounds good. All right, let's see what Ron values over here. Looks like rock salt. Shorn Crystal, okay. That these rocks can refract some percentage of light waves is their sole redeeming quality, but apparently Ron values them highly because it's worth 76 soul. Fair enough. All right, up to the Ridge of Gold. I'll have to write a note to Jodario to let her know that I actually went to the blooming pools a couple of times so she doesn't feel like I left her out at the beginning of the game. And no, you had maxed everyone, maxed all the part-time jobs, and literally had nothing to do for like 20 to 30 free time sessions. You were dying on the inside. Oh, dear, dear God, yeah, that's understandable. That's like me in the latter half of the second year of Stardew Valley. I was like, I was really keen on like, oh yeah, I'm going to play Stardew Valley for the stream. It seems like I can manage my time in such a way that I'm busy for the first two years, then we can get our uh, evaluation from Grandpa, and then we can end the game right there, because that'll be like 30 streams. And then I got to the second half of the second year, and I was like, I've done everything I want to do. What do I do now? So then I was like, okay, well, there's that new island that I can go explore. So then I went and explored the island, and I was done with that in like three days, like three in-game days. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll sleep for a month. <laughs> Just get out of bed, check my uh, schedule get back into bed <laughs> so let's go sell some stuff to ron shall we yeah sir gilman uh was one of the most talkative am among us so he does talk like that a lot you even got his shine right ron oh boy yeah uh, honor it's maybe not in your dictionary <laughs> maybe i should get ron a dictionary for christmas might be a little bit of a late gift but you know Ooh, look at that. A pile of stardust. It's worth plus 10 if you're raising any of your talismans. It's why I wasn't really concerned about, oh, well, I'm not sure if we'll make this uh, all the way up by the end game because he sells a lot of stardust near the end game, so I wouldn't even worry about it, to be honest. Uh, as for this stuff, Ron, uh, I'm sorry. I've been mostly purchasing things from you, but I'm about to rob you of most of your money. <laughs> I guess the Luminous Idol isn't that expensive, but there you go. And last but not least, hope you find an imp that can use this. Yes, ah, indeed. Watch Wand of Sparking. Dude got perfection in, you think, two years? How? Saw the videos and still don't understand. Yeah, I wasn't anywhere near perfection on my playthrough. I'd just done everything I wanted to. I was like, okay, well, I maxed all my stats. I did the community center. Um, I did everything, basically, that would allow Grandpa to give me a uh, the best evaluation in like a year and a half. I just definitely didn't do everything in the game. Like, I don't think I ever got below floor 10 or 15 of the one place that you go for Iridium or in the desert, but yeah, I had everything I needed. I had a galaxy sword. I had uh, all the other fixings. So apparently fixings is the word of the day today. All right, Ron, uh, that's about all I need. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> okay. So let's see how the essence uh, will fare in this right. Oh, you know what I'm actually going to do before we do this? I uh, forgot to do this before. I'm going to turn on all the Titan Stars, but in addition to that, uh, we're turning the difficulty up to heightened. <laughs> I can't turn it up to true Nightwing, unfortunately, because you have to beat the game in order to do that, and I don't have a clear file on here because... I deleted all of them before I started this playthrough, but we're turning the difficulty up to heightened for the last two rights because I feel like being a masochist, so I'm going to do that. All right, let's go. Okay, now we just wait for all of them to fly in. I hope Orlek isn't coming because it's even quieter than usual. What's up, Therese? Yeah, I noticed. Huh. Wonder if they're just late or. Yeah, I mean, I would assume that they it just wouldn't happen. Like, what are we supposed to do now? Do we go to one of the other, oh, sites? I guess not. We stay here because the the stars are there. They are a shining. 
Mostly the Titan Stars now, but the stars they are are shining. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five Titan Stars that we have not turned on because I find them to be too difficult. So let's turn them on for this one, shall we? Unfathomed Plurness. Silvius Horseheaded. Lord Gandroth. Myalanthius. Time Singer Han. So yeah, if you have all the Titan Stars on, you get a total of plus 50% Enlightenment at the end of each rite. So, uh, will that help us here? I mean, it's only going to hurt us. I just turned the difficulty up, but, you know. Huh. All of the Titan Stars? I mean, they're drowning out the sky, so what other choice do I have? <laughs> so. Inferno mode in an East game. You can bump the difficulty down from Inferno, but you can't go up to it. Play the entire game on Inferno or never see it. Yeah, fair enough. The Commonwealth, your home. Yeah. Today it is a flame, much like a stack of books. You're keen to bring that the back up, considering you burned all my books. You. No, because actually, it's a flame because of you plan. and those like you. We, not we're just the spark. Care. Not that you shall live to see this place again. Well, you're probably right. Your attempts at revolution shan't succeed. I don't know about that part, though. No, by all means, keep trying. I will. As for myself, I shall enjoy presiding over these remaining rites. He seems so sure of himself. Yeah, their sigil's not there. They're they're gone. Probably fair, Bertrude. I mean, that's what I was saying before. I don't think any of the other triumvirates have any chance at potential victory here or liberation, so... Well, that's unfortunate, and little do they know that that's probably accelerating the process of the Titan Star's reappearance in the sky, and, you know, the the lack of the, uh, the Scribe Stars, so. I feel like for Tamitha to give up on this, she must have really felt defeated after both Pamitha left and she realized, oh shit, in order for my plan to succeed, I have to liberate, like, a bunch of people, including myself. I, I hope she didn't. <laughs> I hope she didn't, like, work with Manly and be like, okay, well, uh, we're gonna burn the Commonwealth to the ground, because, again, that would not help our cause. <laughs> okay, well, uh, we have to end the ceremony anyway, so Come I on, guess we just walk over and douse it. Done. Yeah, me neither, Bertrude, but it doesn't seem like the stars want us to leave until we do, so, you know. We'll go do it. I'll let Volfred do it. Why not? No, even your adversaries have abandoned you. They sure have. It's because they know that this uh, process isn't really offering them anything anymore, so... For their sake, let's make the most of our time left, shall we? It is done. <laughs> As expected. The night wings prevail by default. I like how we're all like sad about Not this. Like, oh man. Even care. This doesn't feel right. I hope so too, Volfrid, but knowing Tamitha, I doubt it. So yeah, that's the last regular rite. They don't show up. You don't get enlightenment as a result of it, but they just don't show up. <laughs> That's depressing, honestly. Until the next right. If there even is to be another one. There will be one more, yes. At least it's... That's at least East 8, okay, for Inferno mode. You have to play the entire game on it or never see it. Don't you need kind of need to win? Like, damn, man. I mean, yes, but also masochism. <laughs> no, but actually, so I mentioned yesterday that I had a plan, and... At the end of this game, I have planned for both of the possible happenstances uh, that could, well, both of the possible things that could happen at the end of the game, whether you win or you lose, I will, I have an ending planned out in terms of how things will go. One of them will be significantly sadder than the other one, but we'll see. Not like sadder in terms of the revolution, that's locked in already, but sadder in terms of other things. So... 
Yeah, Brighton, please piss off. You heard a music box for half a second, you're about to freak out, oh boy. <laughs> it's probably one of the instruments in there. Do you want to see Inferno Mode? You can show me some early game bosses with PS Remote Play. Uh, if you want, you know what you can do is you can link a video to me of Inferno Mode in the videos and music section on the Discord server so I can watch it there. That would be, uh, that, that would be best, I think, because then I can watch it after I'm done with this, you know, so. I mean, you can show it to me with Remote Play, but I'd do it off screen, basically, so. Only one way to find out, Bertrude. Let's go look. Yeah, I, I think I know. All right, everybody. Let's face what time we have left with dignity and grace. I guess Solium is uh, willing to wait it out until the very end here, so look upon it for the last. Yeah, the red is really encroaching on him. It's even causing a bit of a drop shadow on some of the stars around Solium, but I give him credit. He's holding out as much as he can. And in case it wasn't clear before this, Oralek is the final boss. None of the other triumvirates can make it. As a matter of fact, if we check the planner, they're all crossed off the list because they have no chance whatsoever of ever prevailing ever again. And I, I mean, I don't feel bad about this for the Chastity and the Accusers, but I mean, I do feel bad about this for some of them. Like, I feel a little bad for the Fate. I feel a little bad for the Tempers. I guess I don't feel bad about the Essence or the Withdrawn. The Pyre Hearts I'm pretty neutral about. Uh, this events, I don't think they'd want to leave anyway, but yeah. Okay, so who's ready to go 24 and 2? <laughs> Tudium, the 29th, the 12th moon, 857 AS. The last remaining stars shall soon be gone. We have this one last chance to get one of us out. May the scribes be merciful to us all. Let's hope they're praying for me up there, because I'm going to need a fucking miracle. Here we go. I also like how the sky is basically falling, like there's basically ash coming down. It's not even like rain or snow or anything like that. It's like pieces of the sky are falling on us at the moment, so. Yeah, unless someone else like invocates for the rights to commence again, it's gonna be a long time before it ever happens. None of us will live to see that day. And yeah, we're facing Oralek in this one, because as, as he said at the beginning of the previous stream, when he so rudely jumped into my black wagon and caught me unawares, he shall have his knight. His knight is, well, not tonight, but whenever we get there, so. I mean, I don't know if it's fitting. I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back, honestly, because we were conducting with everything that the scribes wanted us to for the first couple cycles until Oralex showed up and was like, no, we're also the Nightwings. No, you fucking idiot, you're gonna destroy us all! That's the idea. Ah, shit. What happens after we lose the Sage Stars? Like, what happens to the downside? Down, aside, not a damn it, you can't type. That is a fair question. The epilogue will reveal to us a little bit more about it, though, so, uh, and that won't be too long from now if Oralek has his way, so don't worry, we'll get there. It doesn't give us, like, the full picture, but, I mean, it's not like we're all gonna explode or anything. It's, the downside isn't just gonna, you know, burn in hellfire for all eternity after this, so. Well, yeah, fair enough. I mean, I guess they figured, well, he deserves his one last chance, but even with his treachery. Thanks, Tariq, because I think we're sure as hell gonna need it, so. But who shall we send home last, and will they even make it there? Find out right now. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut it off here. We did, however, get a whole bunch of pages to read, so I think we will read them now before we continue on our journey, just so that they're out of the way. Those are all the additional Titan stars that we didn't have on for the remainder of the game. So let's go read them. And let me take a drink, because this is going to be a long reading session. I think we got most of the pages in the book, though. I don't think it's fully complete, but... Uh, if you're hunting for trophies, I don't think you have to fill up the entire book in order to get the trophy. I think it's just like 75% of the pages, which is usually pretty doable, even if you don't go back to most places uh, by the end game. so... 
You're about to fucking say, you cannot cliffhanger us after 50 minutes. Yeah, this isn't like YouTube back in 2015 when I made episodes that were that long. <laughs> so, all right, so the first of the five is Biolanthius. How very crafty our muzzled friend Jamior, that one uh, quite so diminutive as he did manage to prevail against the hive titan called Biolanthius. Despoiler of the valley, Biolanthius did fall at last into a deadly trap, which doubtless he deserved. Crushed under the weight of 16,000 tons of beetle dung he was. Though how our Jamior gathered all this stuff, only to send it crashing down, he has refused to say. From the Hive Titan flowed a fresh, rejuvenating spring, which gladdens up that valley's desolation quite a bit. As for Jamuor, why, he and his legendary jawblade set a most impressive mark of valor, to which this one aspires. Impressive work, Jamuor. So yeah, uh, you know that big rock that I said was a big rock on top of the spring of Jamuor this whole time? Yeah, that was shit. <laughs> that sounds like something that Jamuor would use, to be fair. Alright, we had Dolmas the Locket. We had Linus Arizak. This is a new one. Lord Gandroth. <laughs> Bro, just go back further. Remember the 10 minute video time limit? Oh yeah, that was a pain in the nutsack too. I think when I first started YouTube, I think it was just about ready for them to lift that ban because I remember we, we ended up doing 15 minute episodes by the time, and even further than that by the time Sword of Mana was over. So maybe they had already lifted it and then I was doing 15 minutes and then they lifted it again by 2011. So I forget. Oh, here's the part that they were just talking about, about the Ridge of Gaul, so. Lord Gandroth, a warrior of surpassing strength, that Gaulathanian. Single-handedly he slew the serpent titan Gandroth, which envenomed downside prairies verdant plains. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Master General Gaulathanian, he was undeterred by Lord Gandroth's myriad attacks. He was a Dark Souls character, evidently. His lashing tail, it hurled rocks the shape of swords and thrice as sharp. His eyes reduced brave folk to mewling babes. I can't help but feel like Under King Oras is embellishing a little here. <laughs> but Gaulathanian stood tall and brandished his tower shield and sent Lord Gandroth's fury back into his monstrous countenance. Now, Lord Gandroth takes the shape of a stone ridge, conspicuous, and now as well, you know the full, unguarded truth about his fearsome past and Gaulathanian's glory. Definitely embellished that one, there's no way. <laughs> Some kind of mirror shield or something, what is this, the Legend of Zelda? Unfathomed Plernas. The Underking would know a lot about this one. In all of this one's conquests, never has the Underking confronted such a foe as the Sea Titan Plurnus. That grand and hideous wench presented nigh inestimable peril for whomever sailed or swam the downside sea. Tales of her monstrosity long spread across the world. The Underking was undeterred. Nay, this one made it his life's mission to give her recompense. Emboldened, having felled her cousin Endriga, he drew her out of hiding, and then sailed the remains of the Dazraban, the doomed ship with its sharpened prow, straight through her heart. Huzzah! The catastrophic detonation which ensued left no surviving witnesses, save one. The Underking survives to speak of it, and write of it, which he shall do. Repeatedly. <laughs> Oh, now we know where all the worms get it, because uh, the Under King definitely left them an example to live up to. God damn it. <laughs> Time Singer Harn. The tempests ravaging the downside are the handiwork of the Time Singer Harn, known as the Sky Titan. The furious elements, they are his troubled dreams, manifested in this troubled land. We the Eight, we sought to cure him of his ailment, for his unrelenting and unpleasant dreams had long become our treacherous reality. One night, we drew him toward the Rite of Flame, a stratagem of Solium Mer's design. There, he was stricken by the stars and dazed, and overcome by their eternal, shining glory. The Sky Titan thus bonded with the sky. The tempests which remain, they are but lasting traces of his waking dream. Surprisingly, a positive ending for one of the Titans. This Titan had a more positive ending than Sandra. That's really saying something. <laughs> But I suppose some of them had to be benevolent. Unlike this one. And then there was Zilvius Horseheaded. I think this is the last one if I remember my amounts correctly. Without warning from the cinders and the seething rock that gushed forth from the sea and soil at the foot of Black Basin rose the Mare Titan Zilvius. She broke the land beneath her burning hooves, whinnying vengeance upon those who thwarted dullness. Whinnying vengeance. What a phrase. <laughs> 
We the eight, we were divided then, and blinded by the smoke and heat and thunder. But for the grace of Mother Trieste Tithis, all would have been lost. With unswerving concentration did St. Trieste then invoke the old enchantments inscribed upon the holy scepter which she bore. The land burst into starlight, rending, rending Zilvius in twain. Her visage now strikes fear into the hearts of her foul kind, not ours. Not bad, St. Trieste Tithis. She was using the scepter of the Empire as well in the process of doing that, so I suppose that means that the High Wing Remnants were closer to the Saurian, uh, to the Empire of Sar way back in the day. Interesting. All right, I think that's all for the book. I think we're done reading. This has nothing new for us. We have all of our equipment set up. I'm going to take a drink, and then we will continue on our journey to the last place that we need to go. Sorry, my, uh, the air caught in my throat, and I thought I was going to cough, but I did not. Let's continue our journey. Or not. Foolish reader. Brighton. Your so-called friends. You are accomplice to their hateful plot. Well, what are you going to do, punish me more? They are exploiting you. That's what you think. You shall never have your freedom. You're correct. I don't care. They're my friends, Brighton. And I will back them up to the ends of the earth if I have to. I hope that doesn't uh, play into the, the right. I hope I can concentrate enough. <laughs> All right. No need for words. Let's take off. However, there may be a need for song. Does it? Okay, Tariq. Tariq, I always love when you when you play that lute, so give it your all. It might embolden us. When the stars align, the right shall Love that track. Love it, love it, love it. Now, those of you who came here from the YouTube notifications for the stream may actually recognize that track because I've been using the white loot version of that track. It's called In the Flame, by the way. It's the game's main theme song. Uh, I've been using the instrumental version, the white loot version of that track, for the stream notification over on YouTube. That being said, today's stream notification was unique because I used the voiced version of the trailer edit of In the Flame as the backing music for that video. That uh, short version that we just heard was the trailer edit of it, although it didn't have some of the bass in the background. If you want to hear the full version of the song, it's excellent, as you might expect. Um, it's, it's all on YouTube. The whole OST is on YouTube. I would not recommend listening to most of it until you've played the game for yourself, though, because it's probably better to hear it in-game. But, well, if you've been here for the whole time, you probably deserve to hear it anyway at this point. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, I always like hearing Tizo's prayers, so let's have him gain favor from the scribes. Nothing against Bertrude, but Tizo's my buddy. This is how you make auto-travel. Yeah, you actually couldn't uh, dash during that whole attempt there. Like, if you tried pressing R1, the game actually disabled that to allow you to hear the whole song. So, but yeah, it's a really good way of uh, kind of emboldening you as you go. Will it uh, favor us when we face Orlek? Uh, but... I'm just glad to hear Tariq sing one more time while I'm not in mortal danger. <laughs> 
All right. Here we go. One person will leave, the rest will be here forever. I guess we better start getting comfortable. Okay, we can seek the Curse Scribe's favor to see if that will avail Tizo for this final rite. Yeah, probably gonna be the final time. Now he's praying also to Haub, because I don't think Haub actually has a statue up here, if I recall correctly. He might, but I'd, we might have uh, glossed over it earlier. Point is, is that he's praying to not only Jamior, but also to his own great-grandfather, who was fairly close to Jamior, from my understanding. That's probably where he got all that beetle dung. <laughs> he was like, hey, so I know where a whole bunch of beetles are. Do you, Haub? At least it's not as team's difficulty. You'd probably be screwed if this were True Nightwing. Oh, for sure. Like, there's no way we'd win on True Nightwing. We have a chance at winning, even on Heightened plus all Titan Stars here, because of Bertrude with the prayer beads, but it's a slim chance. We'll see. I do want to show how the game treats Heightened difficulty, though, so we'll see if it actually goes through. So... Tizo's devotion is so good. <laughs> I, I love him so much. He's so great. Not just because he's cute, but also because his character is really good. He's just so devoted to the cause, and he's so willing to self-sacrifice. I almost say it's to a fault, but then he, you know, goes fishing with you or, you know, does something else that's cute, and it's like, I don't know if that's to a fault. <laughs> okay, we have one last chance at vocations. Tizo gained plus two presence for the next rite. That actually will help him. Uh, do we forage or do we read? I think we're gonna forage again, actually. We could look in the Hewn Monuments. A potent serum here, I should probably go for that. And then there's Floating Rings, which is something Falcon Ron values. I'm gonna take Administrative Charge here and say we should try for this serum, because it might be a potent one, like a one that permanently raises a stat. So let's see if we can find it. Yep. It's plus one quickness. Hell yeah, dude! Vertrude's gonna be even faster. Awesome. You spoiled the ending of Sonic Frontiers for yourself. It's probably on your should buy list. Like, holy hell, that actually hurt. Yeah, I haven't seen anything about Sonic Frontiers, to be honest, so. I don't know, I've been pretty off with Sonic in general ever since the boost formula came into being because I just can't play it without getting motion sickness, but. I don't know if Sonic Frontiers keeps that or if it does something different. It might be worth checking out at some point to see if it does something different, so. All right, Bertrude, here you go. 15 quickness plus Serpent Swiftness equals you're pretty much as fast as Pamatha at this point, although you can't fly, but you know. Excuse me, we'll do the best we can with what we've got. I think Sandra's dialogue doesn't happen until you get all the way to the top, so I'm gonna wait to talk to her until we get all the way through the Scribes Gate, so let's go. It's okay, you sort of like the Boost Formula games, but they got old, so you fell off after Unleashed. Yeah, fair enough. I, I wish I could play them, to be honest with you, but I just, I look at them and my eyeballs bug out of my head and I feel like I'm gonna throw up and it's like, okay, no, I, I can't do it. <laughs> so, and it's weird because like, I don't get motion sickness on roller coasters or any of that sort of stuff, but those games, ooh, they give it to me, that's for sure. Oh, nice, we got some news of Sir Gilman, so let's see what he's up to. He was promoted to the rank of Veiled Captain. Oh boy. <laughs> well, there we go. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. <laughs> if only you could get your hands on them, huh, Bertrude? True. Very true. I'm glad you feel inspired because, yes, it will give us the last plus one hope global bonus that we get for all of this. So we'll wish him good fortune and we'll wish us good luck because we're just about there now, so. Oh boy. It's a hidden power of Sonic the Hedgehog. Cause motion sickness to certain people, or only me, because I've never heard anyone else get motion sickness from those games. So. That's what I've heard, Celeste. It's unfortunate because I didn't really get to know you all that well. I suppose Tariq got to know you, though. All right! Salute you, said us. Oh, boy. But yeah, if you listen to the lyrics of the um, 
of the morning song that they were singing before the end of the last stream, these two are basically married, and Tariq has to spend the most of his time while the rites are going on, uh, not here with his wife where he would probably want to be. He has to spend them all down there chronicling everything that's going on, so it sucks for them because they've had to do this for who knows how long since the last bards were around. Oh boy. What are you guys gonna do? Go into a uh, cryonic sleep or something? Alright. Everybody knows what they want to do. And I am their reader. An old farmer who wishes to help his friends be free again, and will not stop until he assists them to the best of his ability. And by old, I don't really mean like old and gray, I mean old as in older than 18. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, Tariq, have fun. <laughs> We'll go get prepped while you guys get ready. We'll meet you there when you're done. Okay, calm down, Quagmire. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, they're, they're giving me the opportunity to make the jokes, but, you know. Okay. Final preparation time before we commence the final liberation. The Beyonder Crystal seeks me. Oh, no. <laughs> Sandra, what have you wrought this time? Here we go. No, it's fine. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Time is stopped outside anyway when you call me, so it's all good. What's up? Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is the last liberation, right? After this, it's, it's over. What do you mean I won't need you anymore? You act like I'm using you like a tool. Come on, Sandra, you know me better than that. That would be really nice, yeah, actually. I, I kind of wish they included that in the Imprisoned for Eternity clause that you got let out when the rites ended, but they didn't have that foresight, apparently. God damn these scribes. I'm going to blaspheme while I'm in here because she does it all the time, so it won't be anything out of the ordinary. <laughs> oh, okay. Huh. Well, that'll be nice for them, but for you... Great. Sure. What's the proposition? Well, I think I know. I mean, I can't get out of here, so... Sandra? It's already done. Take the crystal with me. Yeah, because a lot of people just kind of left you the last time they were done with their reader duties, didn't they? But... And so that you can keep me company, let's not forget that. Ah, that's so nice of you, Sandra. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think anyone would prefer a little company to an eternity of solitude. Sure, but I mean, it'll give you some time and some memories to keep with you when I eventually die. It, listen, you've done enough, okay? You've done enough. I will live my life how I see fit. That is the meaning of freedom that the Nightwings have strove for, but I don't have to do it alone now. <laughs> Sandra, I'll be honest with you. Even if it is a selfish uh, request of you, I'd be okay with taking you along for a few more adventures. Why not? I will not sell the Beyonder Crystal. That is not okay. Don't even recommend that. I've heard your proposition, but honestly, you had me at I have a proposition for you. And yes, you take the Beyonder Crystal out of the wagon with you. What, you really are surprised by this? Come on, Sandra, you know me better than that by now. I'm glad it made you happy. You're right, because we still have one last thing to do. <laughs> I wish I had your chutzpah, Sandra. I wish I did. 
you took the Beyonder Crystal with you. So you can choose whether or not you want to take Sander with you at the end of the game. It doesn't really do a whole lot. It changes a little bit of dialogue later on in the game. Um, in the epilogue, really. But, and it, I guess it really wouldn't do a whole lot considering I'm going to be stuck down here anyway. But, like, it's better to be stuck down here with her, with a little company, you know? Okay. So, now we can equip these serums. So, let's see. We'll give Tizo the hope one. How quick do you respawn now? 5.3 seconds, not bad. I will take it, Tizo. Uh, so, Moon Serum for Golfred. There you go. 26 Presence. Again, that actually does help his sapling, so that will help him out quite a bit. And last but not least, plus 4 Quickness for Bertrude. She's going to be so fucking fast. I'm going to have to get used to how quick she is, because that's like m 5 more Quickness than she had in the last right that she actually had any uh, had to do any work in. So, yeah, we'll see how that all goes. Okay, let's pay one last visit to Ron. I worked out today, so I'm going to go use the restroom before we commence the final liberation, and then we will strive for our freedom. Potentially in vain, but, you know. <laughs> hey, Ron. Yeah, uh, sounds like we're going to have a little bit less of a reason to come to the shop after this. Sorry, buddy. I mean, I don't know about going out of business. You could always resume your trafficking with Ruki. <laughs> he might even be able to make it legal after the revolution. You never know. Ah, Ron, I'm gonna miss you too. Oh, really? Well, that's very kind of you, yeah. So if you said yes to his uh, opportunity for a sale earlier, he will throw a sale this time. It's... 5% off all of his goods. And only for this particular right. Great! <laughs> I, I love that it just says great. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, he doesn't really have a whole lot for me. That being said, again, if you needed to upgrade your talismans, he has 30 Stardust available at the moment, so go nuts! He's got a bunch of scribe snuff. Uh, these uh, serums, by the way, they don't stack, so it's not like you can just buy them. It says usable once, so that means it doesn't stack with itself, basically. So you can't just buy, like, two more sun serums and stack them so Tizo respawns in three seconds or something. No, it doesn't work like that, so. Unfortunate, but it would be a little OP, so. We'll use the ones that we have. Yeah, sorry, Ron. I wish I had something to give you in this last moment, but hey, I won't need the soul after this. I'm sure Volfrid or Bertrude or I or Tizo will be able to give it to you, depending on who I send away here. Speaking of send away, I'm about to go away for a minute because I'm going to go use the restroom before I face down Orelek, because Lord knows I'm not going to be able to hold it for the next hour while we do the finale. <laughs> I'll be right back.
Okay, I have returned. I'm ready, I think, or as ready as I can be. Um, I also turned up the music a little bit for the game uh, to slightly higher, not as high as I usually do when I turn it up, and then I'm going to turn it down immediately because I'm going to leave it at that volume for the remainder of the stream. Because the music in the finale is phenomenal, so <laughs> we might as well take a look at it and see how it is. So we will leave it there, and if it's a little louder than usual, and if I'm a little quieter than usual, that is why. Okay, let's end this. Let's hope they've got enough power left in them for the whole right. Hmm. Boy, I wish. Maybe if I uh, studied this further, I could get a few more points of quickness. Yeah, sorry to hear that, Tariq. I heard what Celeste said back at the gate. Well, I appreciate that, Tariq, because I'll remember both of you with fondness, too. You've been there since the beginning of my adventure, even if we didn't talk at the beginning. And I appreciate you sticking by me through thick and thin. So go forth with glory yourself, my friend. <laughs> Bertrude? Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm glad that I could teach you something because you and all the rest of the exiles have taught me much. Tizo? I'm glad that you do. I will do my best for you. It has been a pleasure, Volfred. Yes, let's move onward. We'll finish this now. You guys are gonna get me all emotional! <laughs> okay. It's time. One way or the other, let's end this. The final liberation rite of this age shall now commence, and as we've said many a time, mere distance cannot separate our spirits no matter how far we may go, tonight or any night, we'll be friends forever. Because the true liberation was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> there, I said it. Okay, so heightened difficulty, all 12 Titan Stars on, the hardest boss in the game. How bad could it possibly go? Well, uh, just about this bad, as you'll see in a moment. What'd you miss? You got dinner out of the oven. Oh, I took a bathroom break before we started, just to make sure. So, having come this far, you need but take the final steps on your quest for freedom, as we shall. Also got a job email, and they gave you nothing in terms of details. Oh, great. Look, for one last time, upon the fall of Solium, dear reader. Hear me, for one last time. Brighton, I'm listening. For soon... The few remaining stars shall fade away. And only darkness you shall remain. For your remaining days. Correct. In that forsaken land where you deserve to be. We're not at argument about this yet. That you I agree. Here in the Commonwealth shall be put down. And now I draw the line. The exiles whom you liberated all shall fall in line. Because you're wrong. But first, let us get on with this last liberation right you face none other than yourselves each so unlike the glorious night wings of your you weren't around for those it ones it is a shame that one of you shall soon be free for you deserve each other i love that little speech of brightens he's just such a dickhead for the entire game and that just encapsulates the entirety of his character I do think he could have put more emphasis on the last line, though. I feel like it could have been more like a, like a dig, like a, for you deserve each other. Like, with venom dripping from his mouth, you know, but it's still really good. Oh, great. He's even blaspheming here. Not that it makes a big difference, considering what's happening tonight. We have, Orelek. I wish I could say it was nice to see you again. It's not. I'm glad you're giving me that opportunity. I'm not really faithful that it will work, but I'll try my best, so. <laughs> you gremlin. <laughs> we 
love that at entry level, they didn't say if you go to the office or work remotely. They didn't say anything about the pay rate, and they only really said the requirements and that you can earn 10 days of PTO a year. I'm fucking sorry. What? Why do companies refuse to let you just have vacation time? It's either no PTO or you can earn hours. Yeah, it's like, okay, come on. I wish we took a page out of some European countries, because if I recall correctly, in Italy, you can get entry-level jobs that give you starting three weeks of PTO, because they actually value their vacation time over there. Like, Jesus Christ. Anyway, Orlex, sorry, I was talking about PTO. Because they have caused you much suffering, haven't they, Orlek? I still feel bad about him, honestly. Like, I understand that he's the reason why this is all happening, the final straw that broke the camel's back, but I can't help but feel like he got gypped, man, just like the rest of us are about to get gypped. Okay, we have to make a choice. In the rare event that we actually win, the exile that we anoint will be returned to the Commonwealth. If we don't win, Orlek will be returned to the Commonwealth. No pressure. I'm gonna do it the same way we've always done it, Tariq, so... Alright then. Who will I be sending home? I've made my decision. I made it a long time ago, to be honest with you, because I came here with two of Volfred's old companions, knowing that it may have a very small chance of demoralizing him. Is it gonna work? There's only one way to find out. One final opportunity for salvation. Too bad for the rest of you. We got a bio update on Orlek. As usual, I'm not gonna read it, but... Actually, you know, I may read this one. We've kind of gotten an idea of what he's all about, considering we've heard his whole spiel with uh, Volfred and all that, but I guess I can read this one. He's the final boss, I might as well. Uh, he's a former exile of the Nightwings, betrayed and abandoned in his moment of glory. His crime was insubordination, his motive was insurrection, and he was exiled for 18 years. I think I... Did I read this one when he first came here? I forget, I feel like I almost did. I feel like I've seen a few of these things before already. Well, I'll read it again anyway, why the hell not. He was repulsed by what he saw in the blood border, which sowed in his heart a yearning for greater peace. He tried to use his influence to negotiate a treaty with the High Wing remnants, but not everyone was swayed. One day he received direct orders to return to the front. When he refused to soil his hands again, they cast him down. There, in time, he became affili affiliated with the Nightwings and grew to become one of their finest rites conductors until tragedy struck, and he was left clinging to life at the foot of the Sacred Mountain. Didn't really end well for him, because now he's fueled by treachery and vengeance. So he has the Ashen Coal. It's rank 40, because, again, these people cheat. <laughs> uh, he has Celestial Spike. He has Longstride. I think he's basically got the whole left tree, if I recall correctly, but we can't check stuff. It's the same two people that he had with him before. This one has the moon crest. I don't know why. It doesn't really assist him all that much. And this one has a tailwind crest. Kind of lower talismans than I would have expected. I would expect it at least for them to be like, excuse me, maxed out or something. But Oh, there you go. Alright. No more standing on principle. I'm pretty sure at this point, if you know me, you know who I'm liberating. Tizo. I'm sorry that I have to make you do this, Tizo, but it's gonna be the only way to get him to maybe flinch in the face of all of this. And I hate that I have to use you for that, but if we want to get as many people home as we can to assist with Volfred's plan, it's gotta be you, buddy. It's gotta be you. shall be at his side. Volfred. We are gonna need all that pyre, believe me. 
and more, frankly. It, it really, if you wanted to, like if you didn't have the prayer beads, I would recommend buying the Flame Leech for Bertrude at this point, because at, there, at least then you stand a chance, because you'll get 50% of your pyre back when she plunges. So you'll get 15 back each time she plunges. But, yeah. We've got the prayer beads, so... We'll use them instead. We gotta give them a show, Bertrude, so let's do the best we can. They are. I hope you don't flinch in the face of your two old friends. Actually, I kind of hope you do, but knowing you, it probably won't work. <laughs> well, about that. Hello again, Orelek. Nice to see you again. You're gonna invade my black wagon again. Why is that strange to you? Are you so blinded by your hatred that you can't believe someone would be selfless? I suppose so. All right, his principles against mine. Let's see which, which one prevails, shall we? Oh boy. Everybody's gonna give him a show, so let's see if we can assist them in the process. And here comes my favorite dialogue exchange in the game, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so I really didn't make much mention of it previously, but... You notice the bandage on Tizo's head? You know whose bandages that looks like? Yeah, so Orelek, being the chief physician of the Commonwealth that he was, uh, he actually mended Tizo's horn at one point, and Tizo now wears this bandage in solidarity for Orelek. So that time when he was looking for a spare bandage back at the Black Wagon, he was missing Orelek. So there you go. I didn't want to make much mention of it to see if anybody would catch that detail, but they thought of everything. So little has to be said between these two, but it's already making the tears well up in my fucking eyes, man. God damn, that's such a good dialogue exchange. Alright, I'm gonna shut up now so you can listen to the true Nightwing's version of Never to Return. I'll just see what I can do in the meantime. Oh god. The final chance at liberation for the age. Oh god. Uh, okay, Tizo, grab that. Thank you. Where's the, where's the ball? There's the ball. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Also, Volford has a line with him. It's a little more, uh, a little less emotional than that last one. Well, he thought you were dead, so... I don't think we can do that. Not easily, anyway. So it doesn't show you your odds in the plan anymore. Probably to give you that one last little tense up and be like, wait, what? Well, then you've sealed your fate. Oh, boy. All right, Tizo, let's try this again. Oh, good. As if the pre the other situations in this ride and the other problems that we had in the rights weren't bad enough. Now there's fucking meteors raining on the field. Yeah, so from now on there will be a warning circle on the field for a 
couple of seconds before the meteors will rain down. So basically, if you see it, uh, run the other way. <laughs> so you and me both, fuck. Song hurts you. Yeah, I get that. Believe me. Speaking of which, uh, he invoked them, so now they uh, hit all of us in turn. We'll be back quickly, though, because Tizo is god, basically, but it's not a permanent banishment, basically. Oh my god, I almost got hit by that. Oh god! Okay, four more. Ah, damn it, I didn't get it. Whoa! Tizo? Be gone. Oh my god, okay. Take it! Don't take it! Wow. Uh, Tizo? Oh my god, okay. I don't know if this is gonna work. Yeah, dropped it, I figured. Wow. Uh. Nope. I'm trying. I'm really trying. Oh my god, the frame drops. Okay, I got the thing. Take that, thank you. This is such a good round, holy shit. Oh my god. Okay. Phew. I'm not gonna make it. I needed to move faster than that. <laughs> uh uh. Where's the ball? Here's the ball. Oh god. <laughs> Alright, uh, Tizo, it's up to you, buddy. Might have to use your star sign unless this is over with. Like, right now. Oh my god, right now? No, damn it! The frame skips! Why? Seemingly unfair. Well, he invocated the meteors, so uh, it's his own damn fault. Oh, I missed again, damn it. The frame skips, why? I know why, it's because of the meteors, but Jesus fucking Christ, if only they weren't there. Oh, Celestial Spike, well. I might get both of them, nice. Yeah, but how, I know. That's what I'm asking, damn it. Eesh, that was a close one. I can just barely grab the, uh, oh god, grab the orb away from him as a result of the uh, extra pyre, or extra uh, stuff that I get from, uh, the, the extra aura that I get from Vulford being right there, so. I'm trying, Aurelek, I sure am. I'm, I'm gonna fight for it. What the fuck just happened? Uh, frame skips just happened, that's what it is. Thank you for the badass final round, my friend. Well, it's not over yet. We're almost there, but it's not quite over yet. Uh, I don't think I... Hmm. Okay, so Tizo got him. That guy might get banished by the lightning. Oh my god, Bertrude! Damn it, he caught me. I'll take that, thank you. Don't even think about it. You can chase me if you'd like. Making it a little hard on you, Oralek. I shouldn't piss him off. Oh god, I almost made it. Ah, he jumped over, damn it. We're not denying them liberty, Orlek. We're testing them to see if they're worthy, and none of them have come up worthy. You deserve your freedom, because you earned it. The rest of them need to earn it. That's what the scribes wanted. All right, here we go. Oh God, that lightning spooked me a little bit, if I'm honest. Okay, Vital Pounce, damn it! Vital Pounce almost just saved the day! Out, Orlek. I'll take this though. Alright, come on, Bertrude, get here faster. Okay, good. 
There's the ball. There's the ball. It's in my hands. I need to go. I keep missing. The pressure! It's too great! I can't handle it! Oh my god. Oh. Night wings proved their worth. It's over. An outcome which left little room for doubt. I can't even believe. Bertrude with the prayer beads. The scribes have chosen. Tizo, I can't even believe we did it, buddy. Oh my god. I guess Oralek flinched. Who knew? Uh, scribes, are you guys still up there? And thus, the scribes have chosen. Hello. And thus, the scribes have chosen. Operator, please dial the scribes for me. And thus, the scribes have chosen. Operator, I think I'm out of service. Nightwings. Reader. What have you done? What do you mean, what have we done? How the fuck am I supposed to know what's going on? Uh, Tizo, did anything like this happen previously? Like, in the hundreds of years you've lived to see the rights? Is IRL Rugby like this? I don't think so. <laughs> IRL Rugby doesn't have nearly this many frame skips. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Okay. Oralek, what did you do? Oh no. Uh, oh. It just took them a minute to get it working. Wait, why is it blood red? Holy shit, uh... What? I don't know if I want to go into that. Amarella, sorry, I didn't see you come in. Welcome. How you doing? You were here just in time for the final boss fight. This isn't nearly violent enough for rugby. That's fair, too. Yeah. <laughs> this is like how you felt when Yasmat went down after 30 minutes of actually playing at four times speed. Yeah, it's like, oh my god. <laughs> so. What do you mean, wide open? Oh. So can we all leave? Oh. So only the Anointed One can leave, is that what you're saying? Okay, so it's it looks like it could be, but it's not. Okay, so it's it's the same as it always was. Alright. So we have to choose whose freedom is the most worth it. It's their last trial to us. I don't know, I think it was to prove... One, like, that we were worthy still as the Nightwings. Okay. So why would I be worthy, then? I have never even given any thought to the idea of leaving this place. Huh. Maybe it's because the scribes are showing me some mercy, considering I've helped all of you this whole time? Or Oralek. I think Oralek just gave up his spot. <laughs> oh, Tizo. Oh, little buddy. You've made up your mind, huh? I think I already know what you're thinking, and it's not just because I basically have telepathy at this point. Yeah. Tizo wants me to go free. Oh boy. I don't know if it can keep bouncing back and forth like this. I think we only have a precious few moments to decide. Great. I'm sure you will, but, well, it won't matter much. The peaceful revolution is all but at hand, Orlek. You'll have little to do but watch. I mean, that is fair. And so, you have to make the final decision of the game. 
You can choose yourself to go free. Tizo said, you can go. You can choose Tizo anyway because he was the one we wanted to set free anyway when we started this whole thing. Or you can choose Orlac, who earned his freedom rightfully and deserves some justice. The choice is yours. Now, the choice in this case is not yours, as in a choice is yours, chat. The choice is mine. And... The scribes are playing fucking 5D chess with multiverse time travel, something like that. Well, I gotta be honest with all of you. I said it before we started this. If you love somebody, let them go. Tizo, buddy. It's yours. Go for it. Absolutely, man. I, I couldn't think of anyone better to carry on the legacy of Haub the Swallow. And now you can do it up there. I hope he doesn't get lonely. But listen to me, buddy. Okay, I have one last thing to tell you before you go. Don't forget to go fishing for me. I gave my freedom so that Tizo can have his. He's set to return to the Commonwealth and leave the downside forever. May he return in glory. Godspeed, Tizo. By the scribes. No stars remain aloft. The cycle of the rites. It is finished. The Commonwealth. What shall become of it? What shall become of us? Nightwings. The opportunity to gain your freedom from the downside. Was it not enough? If we had to leave this place and return to the home that cast us out, Brighton, then that would be no freedom at all. Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional already. <laughs> that night, the exiled Tizo returned to the Commonwealth. He was to be the last. The stars had faded, and the cycle of the rites had run its course. He found the Commonwealth in great upheaval. Spurred by the efforts of six other liberated exiles, Volfred Sandalwood's revolutionary plan had incited the masses. These exiles and the starless sky portended the return of the scribes, because we, I don't think we got that page in the book, but the scribes, basically what people believe in the astralist faith that's, up, that's the primary religion up there right now is that when the stars dim, it means that those people are being reincarnated on Earth. Because otherwise, why would the stars fade? There's no reason for them to, so. That's the belief. The game didn't tell us this until just now, but there you go. The people surged into the streets, shoulder to shoulder. Led by the six exiles, and Tizo, their voices shook the heavens. The leadership of the Commonwealth panicked. No blood was shed that night, and by dawn, it was over. The leaders of the Commonwealth had cast themselves back into exile, because remember, they all were exiles previously or joined in this new cause. Thus, in its 838th year, the Commonwealth had fallen. The new Saurian Union declared its sovereignty in the next year. Among the changes that its elected leaders ushered in, they vowed never to cast their people into exile, and they abolished the old Commonwealth decree forbidding literacy. Today, we still remember all of this, and we remember the exiles of the downside, whose deeds led to the dawning of our age, whether they returned or not. So this is the epilogue screen. You can now hover over any of the people that were major characters in this game, and it will tell you where they are now. 
So there you go. But let me read chat before we do this. So too much pressure for you to help with that. Yeah, that's understandable, John. So <laughs> to learn what became of them since last you met. This is a dick move. The devs knew what they were doing. So what happens if you choose Oralek? So if you choose Oralek, he gets one of these fancy halos and the white anointed robes to go up there. And he has a special bit of dialogue, well, that happens in his epilogue. Uh, his epilogue, along with all of these people's epilogues, change depending on whether they were liberated, who they met with during the game, whether they commiserated with the major characters that they have some conflict with, all that stuff. There's flags everywhere on this screen, and we now have to go through all of them, so... Uh, that being said, had we lost to Oralek there, the game would have also provided us with an opportunity. What can happen with Oralek if you lose there is you can reach out to him and you can do one of two things. You can either allow him to take his freedom without reaching out to him. Actually, it's one of three things. You can allow him to take his freedom without reaching out to him and let him go up there with vengeance still in his heart. You can reach out to him with your telepathy and manipulate him to force him to give up his freedom for either yours or Tizo's or whoever you anointed, which is also a dick move on your part and one of the only dick moves you get to do in the entire game. Or you can take the ending that I was actually, to be honest with you, going for, which was Oralek wins. You can reach out to him with your telepathy and tell him all about the adventures that you've had and how sorry that Volfred was that Oralek couldn't take part in them. And he will, not really, a little begrudgingly, but he will come to the conclusion that his anger isn't worth it anymore. And he will say, okay, so this reader who helped me through my anger, I want them to go free. And then after that happens, you can either choose yourself to go free, or you can choose Oralek instead. Uh, he won't let you choose Tizo if you reach out to him and help you uh, help him through his problems, because, well, that would be breaking up the band, now wouldn't it? But speaking of breaking up the band, this ending is more de the more depressing one that I was talking about, because, well, I have to say goodbye to my best buddy, and Oralek, uh, we'll get to him. That is a fuck ton of flags, absolutely. But yeah, there's a lot of different ways that this can go depending on how the final liberation rite goes, who goes free, who doesn't, whether or not they interacted with the right people over the course of the game, whether you interacted with them enough over the course of the game. There's just a ton of stuff here. So. Anyway, let's start down from the bottom here. Let's check out the fate. Or actually, let's check out the accusers first. They're the first ones we fought, so... Yeah, I, I'm... You know what? That sounds about right for Lendl. <laughs> Uh, not likely, buddy. The only star you're gonna find in the sky now is the one on your chest plate there. And all he's doing is sitting there staring at the sky. Sure. Yeah. Oh. Well, he must have decided survival was worth it eventually anyway, or maybe he's only living for vengeance now. Let's hope we never run into him again. Alright, the Fate are next, because they're the next ones we fought in the rites. I think after that was the Dissidents, then the Withdrawn, then the Pyre Hearts, then the Essence, the Chastity, and the Tempers. So we'll go in that order. Now again, this is the one that can change. If you allow the Fate to be liberated, Dalbert gives up his spot so that his son Almer can go free, and if he had a lot of interactions with Jay, or whatever you named your moon-touched girl, uh, they have a special ending together, actually. And that cha that actually is the case whether if she goes free and he goes free, or if they both stay behind and stay in exile, they both have a special ending together, so... Yeah, well, it's going to be a struggle down here, but thankfully there's at least one farmer among them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they cast down his adopted son. How can you forgive a nation that does that to a child? Well, that's unfortunate, but I'm glad that it was peaceful for him. His uh, passing is always peaceful as long as his son is here, and that's kind of why I didn't want to break them up, because... It's His p passing is a little bit less peaceful without his son there. He's concerned about his welfare, and he kind of passes due to stress, basically. So, yeah. I believe it. I mean, the kid adored his adopted father. 
I'm sure he'll get up there eventually, and then the stars will shine down on his clan again. All right, well, uh, time for Barker. Never one to stay quiet. <laughs> I actually really like Barker's epilogue if he doesn't get liberated. It's actually really good. Check this out. I mean, that sounds about right for Barker, not really giving a shit about what's happening. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it, Barker? So what are you going to do about it? Yeah, so in the wake of the rites ending, Barker actually takes up the mantle and invents a new sport in the guise of the rites, like in the visage of the rites in the same vein, in order to entertain people in the downside. How fucking cool is that? <laughs> I can't believe we earned enter sports entertainment out of this in hell. <laughs> and yeah, as it turns out, it wasn't just Barker and the dissidents that did this. Uh, there were other exiles that decided, yeah, you know what, what the fuck, I'll give it a shot, why not? <laughs> so. And it's, it's so nice for Barker because he's such a character and it feels really bad for him to not feel like he has a purpose in life, which if he gets liberated, he feels pretty directionless up there. And to allow him to do this, it just feels so fitting for him, you know? So that's why I never let him go. <laughs> it sucks for him that he can't leave, but I don't think he'd like it up there anyway, so. All right, next, uh, the Astroborn Worshippers. Yeah, holy shit, that is a thing. Oh my god, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, good. And what is she planning to do there? Yeah, they left her to her vile work to go play sports ball with Barker and the dissidents. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Uh, Mil- uh, not Milith. Uh, Milda, what did you do? Oh. Well, they did say she was a pyromancer. I guess she got a little carried away. Literally, because she blew herself up. Great. If she gets liberated, by the way, she jumps directly back into the downside and does this anyway, so. Another one that it's like, okay, well, there's no real reason to liberate her. <laughs> I don't know if I should spoil what happens to everybody if they get liberated, though, because it would give you guys less of a reason to go play the game. Maybe I'll just do it for the people who are our adversaries. I don't know. And, yeah, so... As a result of Umilda's stupidity, we get our first uh, little thing about the Saurian Union. Our nation, formed in 839 AS after the fall of the Commonwealth. One day we all may stand shoulder to shoulder with a common cause. Volfrid Sandalwood. But apparently the Astroborn isn't coming back anytime soon because they investigated it and, yeah, he's not even remotely close to coming back. <laughs> so... Don't spoil it. Let us suffer. There you go. Gives you a reason to play the game, right? As for Sir Deluge... He did! With his skin intact. And now he has nothing left to escape. Yeah, about that. Sir Deluge is like, nope, that's a weight off my non-existent shoulders. I had to think about that one for a second. He's a bit of an anomaly among the worms, isn't he? But yeah, so remember Lady Seagrass? She was one of the ones that, uh, she basically replaced Sir Gilman in the rights. I think I highlighted her one time and one time only, way back in episode two, so. Uh, but apparently, uh, he's got a little bit of a girlfriend now. And by a girlfriend, I mean they bred like fucking rabbits. Good lord, man! He's getting busy. We'll be lucky if we, there's any fish left for us to find. Man. <laughs> okay, Tamitha. Let's see what you're up to. Yeah, about that. And how are you planning on aiding your people when all that's in your heart is vengeance? Uh-huh. 
So this is actually something that comes into play in the other two endings. So if you get the less peaceful revolution or the bloody revolution, the High Wing Remnants use Tamitha's intel to strike at the heart of the Commonwealth and basically destroy it, like level it completely in both of the other endings. So Now that kills a few of the people who were working towards Volfrit's plan, not your exiles, but the, the citizens that stood with them. Um, but it basically gets the job done anyway. It, it allows the, the Commonwealth to rebuild, although there's still a little tension there because the High Wing Remnants just did that, so, you know. But yeah, the night that happened where Tizo was liberated will forever be something of a national holiday, really. I hope that doesn't go to Tizo's head. The Scribes Return. Inspired by the liberated exiles, the people of the Commonwealth demanded new leadership and chanted from the Scribes' return night, cast yourselves down, cast yourselves down, because they learned all that there was to know about the rights and the people that led them. <laughs> wah, wah. I'm sure she did. I, that sounds about right, actually. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe if she, like, actually gave some thought to the fact that her sister did all of this for her so that she'd have a more peaceful future. But that's not something that Tamitha can ever think about, so. Manly! How do you feel, buddy, knowing you can never go back to the home that was promising you so much status? Oh, I'm gonna enjoy being down here with him. <laughs> I'm sure he was outraged. Oh my god. Now Manly, despite the fact that I don't like him, he is a practical dude in that he's gonna try to invent something using his wealth and status on the other side to escape from this place on his own. He tried a pulley system, he tried to retrofit a black wagon with superior propulsion, he tried an imp raft, a hot air balloon. At some point, this man, who had no love of the scribes in his life, even sought prayer as an answer to his problems. That's how desperate he was but alas, there's no way out of here now. And unfortunately, Manly also bankrupted his entire family in the process of doing that, so, uh, whoops. <laughs> oh boy. Man, the Chastity have to put up with him in Barker's off-season even though they could just leave him? Well, that sucks. As for the tempers. Yeah, time to call it quits there, Ignarius, until, you know, Barker invents sports ball down here. Good. I'm glad they finally got a chance to take a load off, because man, did this guy deserve a break. <laughs> See, I like the way that the tempers kind of part ways when he's still stuck down here. It's nice, because they kind of get, like, almost a... Well, we didn't get out of here, so fuck it all, I guess. We'll ha throw a big party. <laughs> so. Of course he did. But he never lost sight of Joe Dario. Yeah, well, actually, that reputation probably served him for a little while. I'm sure the odd jobs that he got were fairly beneficial. Kept him busy, nonetheless, so. Okay, so do we get Orelek out of the way now, or do we wait a little while before we see what happened to him? Uh, I feel like we get Orelek out of the way now, because, uh, you remember when I said that this ending was significantly more depressing? Well, it's not just because I had to give up my best buddy. Yeah, we still had 50 Pyre left. <laughs> Unfortunately for you. Sorry it had to end this way, though, man. I still feel bad for what happened. Of course he did. Yeah, so, um... This is why it's more depressing. Because if you get the other ending, where Orelak forgives his companions, he actually takes to a relatively peaceful life in the downside, and he recompenses with Volfrid, they become good friends, he recompenses with Tizo, they become good friends. But if you beat him in the right, or if you manipulate him into giving up his freedom, he commits suicide. That's 
awful for him. And again, makes this ending a bit of a downer in my opinion. It's not the peaceful ending that I was hoping for when I started the stream today. He did survive it once, but I have no reason to believe he'd survive it again. Yeah. He, he had nothing left and chose the only way he knew how to leave. So a moment of silence for Oralek because he didn't deserve that fate. He's a really good villain, though, as I'll talk about when we get to the end of this whole thing, because I personally think that he's, especially if you get the more peaceful version of his ending, where he, like, reconciles with everybody and he actually makes a relatively peaceful lifestyle for himself, he's a really good villain because he's sympathetic, but he also actually earns that sympathy by being a fairly tragic character, and he actually manages to overcome that tragedy and live on in a positive way. Not all sympathetic villains are even written well, let alone get the chance to live on peacefully after the end of the game. So, Oralak having both is kind of nuts, if you ask me. Oh, Falcon Ron. Oh, Falcon Ron. A, a more light note now to uh, get away from Oralak's pitiable decision. Feel bad for him, no lie. He was cheated, lost his freedom, one of his friends died after the betrayal he suffered. He, wa he wasn't a bad guy, and again, he rightfully earned his freedom. But he was so full of vengeance and he couldn't get rid of it because he couldn't accept his own defeat. He wasn't willing to forgive, and that's why he ended up the way he did. It could have been another way, like I said, we could have ended this a different way where he didn't win. But I haven't used the retry button yet, and I ain't starting now. Sorry, Orlek. Oh, did you find an epiphany, Ron? What did you find? Oh, I think I see where this is going. Yeah, so as it turns out, for Ron, this is all going to work out fairly well, because uh, trinkets from the downside are going to grow in popularity due to all of the exiles that we sent home. <laughs> so Ron uh, actually made it pretty big as a result of it. So I don't know why his music isn't playing. It must have been a glitch, but there you go. Yeah, no liability for any side effects. Sign a waiver before I give you my, my goods, but not before you give me your money. <laughs> so, excuse me. Now, the camera sort of pans up like this for some reason after a little while. I'm not really sure why it does that, so I'm going to try to get everybody here, but I'm going to wait. Like, I can't even see Tizo down here right now, but he's, like, right here, I think. So, I'll have to get him later, because I'm going to go in the order that we liberated them, ideally. So. Yeah, Ron, what did you do? He sold contraband, just like he did before with Ruki. <laughs> okay, the camera panned back down again, so maybe now I can see Tizo. As for the plan, well, uh, it was peaceful. That's all you really need to know about that. For Hedwin, well, yeah, there was the plan itself, but yeah, Hedwin being the first one out, it was no real accident. He was probably the most driven among us to be free and to bring the plan to its fruition. So uh, yeah, he probably played a big part in it. And again, even despite the fact that the Astralist tradition is uh, was alive and well when the scribes returned. Uh, Hedwin was believed to be the rebirth of Gaul Golothanian as a result of him being a nomad and returning from exile. And he also finally found that person he was looking for, Fakani Shang, a harp for whom Hedwin cared deeply. They were separated when Hedwin was exiled. That's the one that he fell in love with and couldn't come to kill when they found each other on the blood border. Is the reason why he ended up down there, but Apparently, that didn't really factor into how much he loved her. And he ended up being a leader in the Saryan Union as a result of his uh, newfound experience. So, Well, fair enough. She did play a vital part in your upbringing, so it makes sense. This is the last depressing note for this ending, by the way, right here, is that when Hedwin left on his liberation... You may remember in the first cycle that he made a vow that all four of us, Hedwin, Jodario, Ruki, and myself, would go free. Uh, that didn't happen. 
so yeah once merely the status of a deviant yet now a revered title in the Saurian Union apparently reader now bears quite a bit of weight there so and yeah it leads to Hedwin feeling pretty guilty about the whole thing for a little while he gets over it though which is all for the best I think I mean it's it's a vow it was broken but it was for the best Hedwin this was always going to be my lot in life I'm glad, Hedwin, because it's good to keep in contact with those people. Yeah, so Tizo's down here. So hopefully he'll stay down there when I uh, <laughs> finally get around to him. Up next, Soft G. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that probably was surprising for you. I just got sick of Brighton mispronouncing your name, so I was like, fuck it, go correct him. I was gonna liberate her early anyway, though, because she's always one of the last ones that I liberate in previous playthroughs, so. And what happened that was so surprising to her? Yeah, Kiyama Rope Caller didn't exactly fit the image of the eight scribes. <laughs> that being said, she did have the most faith in the scribes among all of us, so. Maybe that's what they meant when they said six liberated exiles. They weren't including Jay. But they would include her after this. Wow. She was so com uh, good at speaking that she swayed people into re-believing in the eight scribes after the astralist tradition became commonplace. Uh, again, astralism is the theocratic sect believing divine authority rests with the stars and that they alone dictate the future. We all return as stars, so much the brighter should we live with glory, but now that the scribes are no longer stars, I imagine astralism fell a little out of favor. And another religious sect was able to come up in its place, the Eighth Word, a theocratic sect believing that the eight scribes were more than mortal and their words divine. Surely, the book created by the scribes was more than a fable, but a genuine artifact, though perhaps lost to time. Remember, they can't take the book up to the Commonwealth with them, because they're bound to the downside, just like the scribes were. And when Jay and Tizo end up on the same side, they always remain close with one another, which is a silver lining for me, to be honest, because at the very least it means that the two of them can be together and happy with one another. I imagine that after what happened with Oralek, well, Tizo wasn't here to see it, but it probably would have shaken him when he learned the news. This is another thing that can happen when she's up here, as long as her and Jodariel are on the same side. She, Jodariel kind of becomes a bit of a guiding light for Jay, which is exactly what Jodariel always wanted, so. I'm happy for her. I feel like she did really well for herself, considering she was so uneasy about being liberated at the beginning of this. Good on you, Jay. Good on you. The flags in this are worse than some of the BS in Long Live the Queen. Minus being screwed going through the game to get one of the endings, you have to pass a composure check, pass a foreign intelligence check, pass a singing check, and pass a public speaking check. So on top of doing things to live that long, you have to have all of those skills kind of high, or you will die in the war. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot to deal with. Speaking of war, Captain, good to see you again. Sorry we didn't get your, uh, a lot of your stuff going on. Uh, in terms of, like, all the extra stuff that you could do with Ignarius and all that, so. The other thing that we actually didn't get that I was kind of surprised didn't proc was we didn't get to hear Bertrude's backstory. I think it might have been because she got banishment sickness at the same time that that flag was tripping, but I'm not 100% sure about that, so. But yeah, so uh, Jodariel in, is in the image of Solia Mur, basically. And as a result, she took on a fairly high-ranking position in the new Saurian Union. She also took public safety very seriously, as she should. I mean, that's pretty much what she was devoted to, so. Not that they really need that, because when we get to Pamatha, we'll see that the High Wing Remnants aren't really much of a problem anymore. It's good that they stayed together. And, of course, she kept an eye on Jay. <laughs> so.
<laughs> For the most part. <laughs> Good on you, Captain. Good to hear. Rookie, you're up next. <laughs> my good boy. Not my best boy, that's Tizo, but eh, Rookie's pretty close. Oh, and that war has to happen, so you will have to lose the naval battle to prevent the war. All this gets you an achievement. I'm damn proud of that one for a reason. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of hoops to jump through. Holy shit. So. But he had to give all that up in order for the new Saurian Union to come about. <laughs> Well, good, because that would have thrown a monkey wrench into our plan if you couldn't get all of your trafficking skills to bear for the uh, the people that were out there. So, And they believe him to be Jum. You were many main reborn. And yeah, it turns out there's a little bit of an opportunity, and he would strike it out with Falcon Ron as a result. So... <laughs> An aspect of his conscience, huh? I wonder if that's me talking in the back of his head. <laughs> but yeah, so he'll also seek out a few of his own exiles that he had some connections with. Pamitha, in this case, is the one of the ones that he seeks out. Did they ever commiserate with one another? I don't think we'll ever know, but one thing's for sure, they drank each other silly. Also, he kept in touch with Sir Gilman because, again, they liked training together down here, so why not take that, take their place up there and do that? And there you go. That's nice of you to send uh, letters my way there, Rookie. Rookie Greentail at a loss for words. I'll believe it when I see it. Joke's on me. I'll never see it because I'm stuck down here. <laughs> Pamitha. Yeah, that's a bit understandable, considering, you know, what you had to go back to. Mm, no, probably not. I also misread this, by the way. She didn't return to the High Wing Remnants. I read that when we read her letter uh, on the last episode. But yeah, she didn't return to them because, frankly, she betrayed them. So, <laughs> yeah. That being said, it didn't really make much of a difference because... Well, yeah, I wonder why that happened. I can think of a blue-haired lady that may have, uh, well, really teal, but, you know, may have uh, had a little bit to do with that. <laughs> she used her connections wisely. And yeah, as one of the main harps that actually had a connection to the new Saurian Union, she helped negotiate peace terms. And I imagine it did bring her some satisfaction to succeed now, where she failed before. Well, good. Oh, great. <laughs> we knew that part, but oh, great anyway. Huh. Well, that's awfully nice of them. Yeah, uh, about that. No, she didn't. <laughs> Oh, okay, so it wasn't just a matter of, well, maybe one day she'll come around. It was more a matter of, I just like fucking with my sister. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh my god, thousands of leagues beyond the bounds of the Saurian Union. She's really spreading her wings, even if she can't quite get up as high as she used to. Well, that's good for her. I'm glad she felt like she found some purpose. Sir Gilman's next. Before we see what he does, let me read this long message Marie left me. Imagine balancing out your time for classes so that you can go out of your way to get all the skills as high as they need to be, and you also have to balance the emotional state of a 14-year-old girl who starts off being recalled from boarding school to rule her nation early because her mother died and no one knows why, and this is a matriarchy so your father, who is a duke, can't take over. Uh, it sounds like a bit of a clusterfuck, if you ask me. Not knowing much about the game, but it does. It sounds like a bit of a clusterfuck that you would have to micromanage. <laughs> Oh, boy. He regained his honor, for this knight does not yield. <laughs> Good for you, Sir Gilman. Look for something more in your life than fighting. Unless, you know, you join Jodariel's ranks, but uh, no, not quite yet. All those in earshot, huh? So not necessarily everyone. Sure, of course. <laughs> I 
I'm glad that I had such a long-standing uh, relationship with Sir Gilman over the course of the game. It feels like we really got to know and respect one another by the end, so. I don't know if you need to go that far, but fair enough. Good, because that guy was a little bit toxic for your <laughs> well-being. <laughs> Well, there you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, now he can finally relax, but uh, he's not quite relaxing. He's trying to conquer his fear of heights in the process. <laughs> he's ever striving for more, this Sir Gilman. There you go. Exactly. Yep. Honor is a part of the journey you take through your life. And only you can decide if you've earned it. Sandra, we'll come back to you. I need to see my buddy off. Tizo, I will never forget you, best buddy. It is. There's cool shit now that makes it easier, but there's a lot to learn. You'll probably die before you officially get core named. A lot. Oh, and there are 13 or 15 different ways to die, but around 30 spots you can die. Oh, boy. Great. <laughs> this is another thing. Tizo's a bit of a pioneer. He's the first of, the, of his kind to actually be able to leave the downside outside of the messenger imps, who can't really technically leave the atmosphere of the downside. They get close, but not quite there. Excuse me. Again, I hope he doesn't get lonely up there, considering he has no one else of his kind up there. I do think he can do a lot more good up there than down here, though. Especially since we actually won against Oralex somehow, so. But yeah, he's basically Haub reborn, which I think is a fitting image for him, considering he wanted to do his great-grandfather proud. And he still had good contact with Jay, so there you go. Aw, well that's nice of Volford to do. But yeah, unfortunately, Tizo lost two friends in the process of being liberated. He had a few others on the other side, but he lost me, and he lost Oralek. Sorry, buddy. Well, there you go. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm glad, because it doesn't seem like he's the kind to get a swelled head. Hell yeah, dude! <laughs> He remembered the promise we made, my best buddy! <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, he always goes fishing no matter which side of the world he's on at every opportunity he can get, so there you go. Alright, Volford and Bertrude, you two are down here with me, so what are you both getting up to? I hope he prayed for Oralek's soul, because I think Oralek needed it. And as it turns out, it worked out. I mean, we didn't get quite all of the exiles out, but fair enough. We got as many as we could. Yeah. And he had contingency plans in case the plan went awry and bloodshed actually happened, but it wasn't necessary because we got the peaceful end to the revolution, so... And there you go. As long as they aren't stuck uh, above the people now, when they can stand shoulder to shoulder together, I think they did Volfred proud, so. Yep. And it all worked out for him. He didn't get liberated, but everything he could have wanted to achieve with the Saurian Union came to fruition. So good for you, Volfred. There is that, though. But what will we do with all of these exiles before they can invent sports ball to give them some entertainment? Yeah, so old habits die hard, and as it turns out, Volfred said, You know what? I haven't written some stuff in a while, so let me write some stuff. And he became a fairly well-known author throughout the downside, and a little bit in the Saurian Union as well. And also went back to his old teaching opportunity, so there you go. And he's actually spreading his own capacity to read to other people in the downside. He's teaching them literacy. See, this man keeps himself busy no matter what, but honestly, I like this ending a little bit better for him. Like, up there, it's like, okay, you know, he's vital to the plan and all of that, but down here, it feels like he really serves a purpose, you know? He's kind of, like, really helping people down here, so... 
And as it turns out, I got a little bit of a job as a result of it because I could help him edit his paper, so... <laughs> and what were those? True. Very true. Can't lose sight of that or else we'll end up like the Commonwealth. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about that. You're the best defensive unit in the game, so... Oh, now see, that's so nice of the Saurian Union to do. A little bit of a, you know, a last little, uh, last little paying respects to Volfred. <laughs> there you go. Alright, last but not least, our Bog Crone. The best scorer in the game. Well, she's probably tied with Pamatha, but she definitely deals more damage than her in exchange for having slightly less uh, flightiness. Yeah, so, and again, I don't know, I don't know exactly what happens to her when she gets liberated. I haven't even looked it up, to be honest, because I never liberate her. She has a business down here, and she explicitly expressed at the beginning she didn't want to go free, so I always respect her wishes, you know? So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't get to know that part. Um, she's been down here for a long time. I don't think it's been 400 years she's been down here, but I think she's been down here for like over 100 years, if I remember her bio correctly from the last time I played, but she's she's over 400 years old at the moment, so <laughs> she's seen a lot. Well, I'm glad they worked it out nonetheless, even if he couldn't... Uh, you know, reciprocate with her. True. And even despite the fact that Rookie and Falcon Ron were working together, sometimes a few of Bertrude's talismans will perk you up a little bit. And there you go. She still made a name for herself no matter what. Good for you, Bertrude. Yeah, I think she's grown to stop giving a fuck, <laughs> pretty much. I feel like most characters that are over 200 to media just don't give a damn anymore. Yeah, it's kind of hard to, because you've seen so much, it's kind of like, I guess it leaves you a little desensitized, you know? Okay, Tariq and Celeste, did you two hit it off? Yeah, we will attempt to do that. So they had to, you know, write down what was happening, and then... Yeah, we, we don't really get to know what happened to the two of them, unfortunately. But... We do know that they sang for all of us, in more ways than one. It's a distinct possibility, because we don't really know who they were. They're kind of mysterious, all things considered, but they have a very important role to play in the rites, so if they were Heralds of the Scribes, I don't think that would be too far out of the ordinary, so. That's also a possibility. Maybe we just never saw them again because they lived out a simple monastic life up on Mount Elodiel in the embrace of one another. Good for them. And there you go. And last... But certainly not least, my little specter. Yeah, I wonder what we did with the Black Wagon after all said and done. If Tizo remains down here with you, he actually collapses and buries the Black Wagon in the desert so that no one can ever use it again. Um, but, well, since he's not here, maybe I'll have to do that. Or that. I mean, the downside's weather still kind of sucks, so maybe we just used it to move to and from while we, you know, interacted in seasons of uh, Barker's new sports ball. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, about that. Hmm, I wonder. Yeah, well, that's true. So I guess they never really got to know the truth, huh, Sandra? I suppose they would be the ones most likely to offer a, an actual explanation. Oh, yeah, I suppose that's a fair assessment. But they don't know the power 
of the magic that bound Sandra here. It's even stronger than the magic of the scribes and the stars. <laughs> or perhaps a little fear, as she would have wanted them to. <laughs> you know, I knew you were going to have to have the last word on this. You can never leave this stuff alone. <laughs> I will laugh with you, Sandra. They are so far off the mark. Are you really hurt about the way that they depicted you, though? Like, I'm surprised. I would think you wouldn't feel that kind of vanity, considering how long you've been in here. I'd think you'd just dismiss that, but... No, I don't think they will know the half of it. But honestly, Sandra, if they knew the half of it, I don't, I don't even know if they'd be able to teach all of the crazy shit that we did in our journey, to be honest with you. I feel like it might be too much. <laughs> Wait, was this a fucking recounting? Uh, yeah, so Sandra and I are talking in the present, basically, to one another about all of the recounting that we just did of everybody else and what they did afterwards, so... <laughs> well, you never know, Sandra. I could become a writer in addition to being a reader. I mean, they can't stop me. And to be fair, Ron would probably sell my books at some point. So It's true. We know the truth of it. And that's the most important thing. Now the only question is, where do we go from here, Sandra? I guess we'll figure it out as we go. Well fucking played, devs. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there is one more account which warrants mention. The Nightwings conducted the rites under the guidance of a reader. Little is known of him. However, some accounts of him begin to paint a picture. We know he was of common birth. Just stout enough to make a simple farmer. The journey to the downside left him close to death. It was then that the Nightwings found him. They brought him from the brink. He showed them the path. He pressed onward with the others. He had made a vow to help his friends be free. Thus did the cycle of the rites commence its final turns. When the final rite arrived, the reader's freedom was at stake. In the end, however, he remained in exile. He gave up his freedom so that Tizo could have his. From that point on, accounts of him diverge. It is said the voice which troubled him he never heard again. At least not in his head, because Brighton's probably down here with us. Some say he sailed across the Sea of Solus. Though whether that is true, only he knows. We know the truth of it, that's what matters. My guy, that little line means a ton to yourself and your sister. Yeah, there you go. I'm glad that the game could acknowledge that for you. Someday, perhaps, that reader's own star shall emerge, and though he left the new Saurian Union behind in exchange for a friend's freedom, perhaps one day he will find a realm all his own. And when he does, his star shall pierce the dark of night in all its brilliant glory. Until such time, and ever after, all of us give thanks. And since this is Pyre, what better way to give thanks than in song? Awaken the night wings and 
Till the end, my friends. Now at the end, as we bid farewell and return to the stars, we shall find a way home. We shall find a way home. We shall find a way home.
And so the new Saurian Union was formed in the grace of my friends. From what I hear, they're doing pretty well for themselves. Liter literacy is a common practice. The people stand with one another. The government no longer looks down upon the common man as one to be exiled. And all in all, peace reigns supreme. Of course, I really shouldn't know this, considering the fact that I've been uh, away for a while. How I figured it out is a story for another day. The end. Oh, man. Okay, so I could not talk over the credits because the song is too good. It's called Bound Together, the ending theme of the game. We've unlocked True Nightwing campaign mode. There you go. We can return to the main menu whenever we want. But I'm going to give my spiel now because the game's giving me a nice, quiet opportunity to do so. Um, yeah, I couldn't talk over it. And there's a very good reason for it, not just because the song is so good... The song actively changes depending on who you liberated and who stayed behind. You may have noticed that when Darren Korb was mostly singing about the liberated exiles and Ashley Barrett was mostly the one singing about the ones that stayed behind, Volfred, Bertrude, myself. Uh, yeah, so that changes on every playthrough depending on who you liberated. It's such a good detail to seal off this fantastic game. In case it wasn't obvious, based on all of the praise I've been heaping upon this game, Pyre is one of my favorite games of all time. It's not my favorite indie game of all time. That's reserved for a very special game that we'll talk about one day. Don't know when that is yet, but it's reserved for a very special game. Really, the only reason why I can't place it as a perfect game in my eyes is due to the frame skipping. Again... In a game with a twitchy action combat system like this, having frame skip be your way of keeping the action moving, but still allowing the AI to work within the frame skips and make decision making when you have no control whatsoever over yourself is completely unacceptable. You cannot do that. So the fact that the game itself is so good in my eyes, despite that huge glaring flaw, should tell you something. <laughs> it's also the reason why I... Honestly, I have never played a visual novel that's better than this game. This game does everything I could ever want in a visual novel and then some, which is why if we come to more visual novels on the suggestions list, I may just say, no, I can't play this and do the exact same thing I did with Danganronpa because most visual novels can't hold a fucking candle to this game. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to throw shade at Danganronpa or any of the others, but like... There is so much good in this visual novel that this game has. It has, again, it has genuine choice and consequence based on your actions across the game. And it has a lot of them. So that really fulfills basically the only requirement I have in most visual novels. So it, it's just, it's really, really solid, all things considered. I really enjoy the combat system, too. It not only demands that you have a, a fair amount of control over the action itself because it's very twitchy action style stuff. But in addition to that, you also have to use a little bit of strategy because if you bring a hyper-offense team against a team that has good defense, you're screwed. Uh, that being said, there are a few balancing issues. Crones with the prayer beads are fucking destructive forces of nature that can barely be stopped unless you miss your jump. <laughs> Even on heightened difficulty against the final boss, as you can see by the evidence from an hour ago when we managed to beat him somehow... There you go. Um, yeah, and, and I can't really say all of the good stuff about this game without talking about the soundtrack. The soundtrack is incredible. Darren Korb and Ashley Barrett did a fantastic job at creating a soundtrack that is varied, but really, really feels like it's all well put together, despite how varied all of the sound is, to be honest. It's just, it's so, they did such a good job with it, and I'm so proud of the accomplishment that they made with this game, that I am willing to sing its praises from the rooftops as I am now. It does make me a little concerned, though. Yeah, that was a fucking hour ago, I know. I'll read the rest of that in a second. Oh, you know what, I'll read it now before I start talking about the concerning thing for me. That and a Twitter account that you follow are fucking targeting you with laser-guided precision, oh boy. 
What happened with your meals when Hedwin was gone? Totally forgot he was the one making all your food. So I sort of took up the mantle for that. I mean, it, actually, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. I, I had the little bit of farming experience, so that kind of helped. Move, I just had to move it from the ground to the table, that's all. <laughs> so they thank their support circles. Hell yeah. Yeah, they should, because they did a great job with this and probably do a no spell part to their support circles. This is destroying you. Why would I do this? <laughs> Oh, I had to bring this game to bear. Again, it's one of my favorites of all time. So it's There are games on the stream that we've played that are better than this. And again, I can't stop thinking about the fact that if they just lowered the graphical fidelity a little bit so this game didn't have to frame skip to run at a solid 60 FPS, this would probably be my favorite game of all time. And there would be no question whatsoever. Zero games would be able to catch up with it in the future. <laughs> it's just that good. Uh, but the, the frame skips really do it in for me, to be honest. It brings it down a few pegs, so. Not enough to take it out of my top ten so far, though, but, you know, it's it's down a little more than it should have been. Uh, which, again, I am expressing all this positive opinion on this, but it's a little concerning to me, because since Pyre came out, now you may have noticed there's a few glitches and everything like that still in the game. The frame skips have not been fixed. This is a five-year-old game you'd expect with a, uh, an indie developer like that, they would have been on top of that stuff. I get the feeling Supergiant really doesn't like this game. Because when they did all of their trailers for Hades... Okay, so when they did their trailers for this, they said, From the creators of Bastion and Transistor comes the latest in blah blah blah. All that stuff. So, you would think, okay, they're doing the trailers for Hades. It's the fourth game they made. They would list all three of the other games in those trailers, right? They cut this game from the list. They only listed from the creators of Bastion and Transistor in their fourth game and cut this one out completely while also leaving it with a bunch of glitches and frame skipping problems that could have been fixed with some performance patches, potentially, maybe. So I get the feeling that Supergiant really doesn't like this game all that much. And I think that's a shame because, honestly, it, I think that they did really well with it, all things considered. Again, it's my be favorite visual novel of all time. There's very little that can hold up to it in the visual novel genre that I've played. And really, I think if they do feel that way about the game and they didn't just forget about it for some reason, and, you know, maybe some of their interns did the trailer and they forgot about Pyre. I mean, the public doesn't seem to like this game either because very few people have actually played it. I've, I've had to convince three people to play it as a result of my streams, and that's like 75% of my audience. <laughs> so that should tell you something about the fact that even people down here don't know what this is. Um, but honestly, if they do feel that way, genuinely, if they don't like what they did with this game, and I've read developer interviews that give me some supporting evidence that says that they felt like they did not accomplish what they set out to do with this game then I think they missed the most important lesson that Pyre leaves with their players at the end of the day. And that lesson is that you always need to keep moving forward while keeping in mind the things that you did before. Because if you lose sight of all of that, then what are you really? You're, you're not whole anymore. You're just, well, Oralek, really, <laughs> to put a blunt word on it. So I hope that Supergiant doesn't feel that way about this game because I think that their accomplishments with this one are vast, even if it didn't sell as well as they necessarily wanted to, and even if they threw it to the wayside to start working on Hades instead, which Hades is what they wanted to accomplish with this game. They wanted a game with more replay value. And this one has replay value, but what I think it's missing in order for it to have the most replay value, and you know it's bad coming from me when I say this because I hate New Game Plus, in most games. I think this game needs a new game plus. Because when you use true Nightwing mode, it does not keep your enlightenment and all that other stuff that you got on your previous file. It starts you fresh with all of your enlightenment drained back down and you have to do the whole story all over again. So instead of that, keep the enlightenment that we have on the Exiles, give all the ones that we liberated full inspiration, give all of the other exiles that are in the other triumvirates like massive stat upgrades or whatever you want to do basically make it like a true new game plus difficulty so that you can see how the other triumvirate members play while simultaneously getting a greater challenge out of the game but this game never got that unfortunately and i feel like it would have been really good for the game's replay value because then you could see scenes that you didn't see before while also not feeling like you have to start from square one every time so, 
I don't know why they didn't think of that. Maybe they did and decided not to do it. But it's kind of a shame. Because I feel like if that was there, and if the frame skips weren't as big of a deal, God, this game would be going places, man. And it's, it really is a shame. But I'm glad to have gotten to play it. And I'm glad to be able to share all of it with all of you, because it's it's really solid. It's very special to me. It's very personal. Like, I have a deep personal connection with this game, because uh, it was the first game that I was able to play in my six-month sabbatical from streaming in 2020. The first new game that I was able to play. Not Plants vs. Zombies. That one's an old standby. That doesn't count. Um, this was the first new game that I was able to play fresh, after I had to leave due to Gothic 3 being so bad, that genuinely rekindled my love for playing video games. And I don't think I could ask for anything more from a game than that. So thank you, Pyre, for all that you did, because you set me back on the path. And I hope that uh, what I've done here has done you a bit of a service in exposing you to the world, to people that may not have seen it before. That sounds fun. AK, as hard as you usually make games for yourself. Yeah, yeah, so something like that. I would want a greater challenge in New Game Plus, so I think it would have benefited from that, but alas, that's not the case. I am glad for what we got, though, because as I said before, this game is very near and dear to my heart. So, But that's going to do it for Pyre, the stream edition. I hope all of you enjoyed this playthrough. Excuse me, because I definitely enjoyed my time with it, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be taking the rest of this week off from streaming, not only because of the American Thanksgiving holiday coming up on Thursday, but also because I need to prep, because our next project is going to be a long one. <laughs> it's the last game on the old stream suggestions list, and after that we can move on to something new. But what awaits us following this game that gave me so much love and joy? Can the next game hope to stand up to this one? No. No, it can't. And we'll find out just how badly we're going to fall flat on our face on the next episode, which will be happening... Uh, not sure when next week, actually. I'm thinking maybe Tuesday, next Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That'll give me a full week off. But I have to figure that one out because it's a multiplayer project and Cole and I need to confer on it, so we'll see. Uh, but in any case... Thank you for watching, everybody. I appreciate you coming out to Twitch and YouTube to check out the stream. John, I am sorry. I cannot tell you what it is, but we'll find out next week, and uh, we'll give it a shot. Uh, rest assured, though, it will not be as good as this one. I have a lot of problems with the next one, but we'll get there. <laughs> Until then, everybody, or wherever I see you next around the internet, I hope that you'll take care and have a good one. And yes, happy Thanksgiving to those of you who celebrate it. I hope that you get all your fixins. You hate surprises. I apologize, my friend, but some things are... Uh, some surprises are too good for me to pass up, and this is one of them. <laughs> Man, this game was good, though. <laughs>